to another amazing live stream right here on YouTube with your girl Suzette Speaks. I'm excited because I'm going to be talking about a topic today that means so much to me. If you've been following me over the last several years, you know that one of the biggest parts of what I teach and preach is that we have to change our narratives. What stories have you stuck? Well, today, my special guest, Miss Angela Durant, is going to break it all the way down into how we can stop using the same stories over and over and over again and get unstuck right now here in 2022. Are y'all with me? Drop a comment. Welcome. I see you already busy in the chat. Suzette Speaks here. For those of you who are joining me for the very first time, I want to welcome you. If you're watching on our partners uh, on Jamaicans.com Facebook page, Wagwan, thank you. Thank you for that amazing partnership each and every Saturday. They allow me to simulcast over there and get with my, my yard Folks all the way from um, Jamaica, all around the world, Canada, UK, wherever you're watching from, please drop a comment. Let me know that you're watching. I am Suzette Speaks. I'm located here in South Florida. I'm of Jamaican heritage, and that's why that, that kind of works out, y'all. So you might hear a little Jamaican bro. Don't get nervous. It's a part of who we are. We code switch. I'm American, but I'm also Jamaican. Uh, I am an attorney. I am a television host. I uh, do all kinds of broadcast media, but I'm very passionate about self-development, personal development, which is uh, what this platform is about. So if you've never been here, welcome. This is my YouTube show, y'all. I take a big, um, what should I say, lots of pride in it and hopefully, hopefully using it as a platform to help you to thrive, uh, to rethink, redirect, right? Re-energize, reboot. That's what we're doing today. If you are excited about 2022 the way I am, and if you want to make some changes, you better follow me. This is the time that we're going to uh, spend together to learn from one another. Again, I am not the uh, all uh, end all be all expert. There we go. But I'm definitely one who is passionate about seeing my fellow human beings step into their power, uh, open up their mindset, open up their heart space, uh, discover what they came to earth to do and to help them do it. Are y'all with me? I'm ready this morning. It's a beautiful Saturday. It is shining and cold here in South Florida. It is, I woke up to 50 degrees. What happened to my sunshine? What happened to all of that? Yesterday was beautiful. And then now they want to act like it's winter. Can, can I get a, I'm sorry. Okay, you Northeastern people, y'all Midwest people. I know, especially Canada, England. Oh my goodness. You must be like, uh, what's going on? But 55 degrees, y'all. 55 in my hometown. Let's go, Miami. 305 in the building. Drop a comment. Let me know that you're watching. We have a fabulous guest today. Uh, she comes with over 20 years of experience. Uh, from the hospitality uh, arena. She has then uh, pivoted into coaching. She's uh, John Maxwell certified. She has so many things that she's great at. And when we were discussing this topic or what topic we would bring to the people today, uh, she calls herself an escape artist. I said, okay, what'd you escape from? So she says she has escaped the mundane, the, the life of uh, corporate America that was kind of keeping her in a box keeping her limited. And I know many of us feel like that, y'all. So we're going to talk a, a little bit about uh, redefining oneself, but more importantly, redefining one's story, one's narrative, right? In order to help you move forward today. All right. I see you in the chat. Well, I'll go on 50 degrees, bro. I'm freezing. I, I need a jacket and I need boots. Thank you very much. I'm from Florida, y'all. Miami in the building, 305 again. Welcome. This is the Suzette Speak Show. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. So happy to see you. Hit the like button, y'all. You know that it's very important that we show uh, YouTube and Facebook that we get uh, interactive conversations going here. So you know what to do. Come in, greet us. Uh, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. And again, please hit like. I am Suzette Speaks. As I said, I'm an attorney here in South Florida, still practicing. I practice personal injury law. I help people who are injured, whether on the roads, highways and byways, uh, in the hospital, unfortunately, if you get injured uh, during like a surgery or even pass away. I help people with medical malpractice and other uh, related cases. So if you ever need someone, hey, we're going to shameless plug today. I'm feeling good, y'all. It's a Saturday. It's beautiful. It's cold How I'm here in Miami, and we are excited to bring you uplifting, enlightening, and edifying discussions and conversations. But like I said, it's a conversation. I want to hear what you have to say. So if you have a story to have you stuck, you're in the right place today. It's 2022. We, we trying to release some people. If you didn't know, I also have a Patreon. Big up to my Patreon members. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is a sister website to YouTube 
where I can offer exclusive content that won't be on the YouTube. You see the address right there on your screen, patreon.com front slash Suzette Speaks. Right after this live, Patreon members, I hope you got the email last night. Right after this live, I'm going to go live on Patreon. Uh, I want to dovetail today's conversation with an exclusive conversation uh, over there about breaking the spirit of isolation post-pandemic. Y'all still in y'all shell? Y'all still not talking to y'all friends? <laughs> I know I am not. I've had a hard time with it. I know most times when I pick topics here, it's because I have had challenges. So I'm all about breaking that isolation for 2022. But you can't get that conversation because you're not a member of Patreon. So if you would like to join, support uh, my channel, my content, what we're doing here, as well as investing in yourself and hopefully giving you a safe space to talk and let it all out, let's go. Patreon.com, where we're doing exclusive content just for Patreon members. So go over patreon.com front slash All right, I'm done with the plugs. Y'all ready for a good conversation? My guest is waiting in the wings. Like I said, she has a plethora of knowledge on this topic because she's lived it. She's had to change her narrative, change her story. Does your story have you stuck? Does it have you stuck? Do we need to remind ourselves what our stories are every single day? Are we living what our stories are every single day? Are we limited by what our stories are telling us? Oh my goodness, y'all, we're going to get free today. I hope you guys uh, hit the like button as you come in. Welcome, welcome all of those who are watching. Oh my goodness, I see a super chat already and we're just going to get started here. First and foremost in the chat, big up to my Patreon member, Mr. David Hunt, first today. Welcome, sir. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for being here. RM, he beat you. You were second today, beautiful. But thank you to RM. She's the most fantastic moderator. Thank you for being here. Queen Regina, ATL in the building. What's going on, Queen Regina? Thank you. You were so great uh, with all your feedback on our last show. We talked about why did I get married? Y'all seem to like them relationship shows. I don't know. I want to get deep and y'all want to be in relationships, but that's okay. You were so awesome in the relationship space um, with your feedback all on uh, the last show. Why did I get married with Michonne Denise? So thank you, Queen Regina. Hey, Kimo, another fabulous Patreon member. Wagwan. Good to see you, my brother from Dominica. Uh, do you speak, um, I meant to ask you, do you speak a uh, Creole? Sacpas, now do y'all do a sacpas or bonsoir, bonjour, or all of that? Big up to my Dominicans, Caribbean in the building. I see you. Real deal, Spencer Wagwan, how are you? And thanks for hitting me with a super chat. Nice to see you. Also, a Patreon member. Big up. You be out there with shorts, not in Florida, boo. I'm mad. Y'all see, I got on a long sleeve today. I'm mad. I was ready to go outside and I'm mad. It's cold. I could not exercise. Even last night, it was getting nippy. I could not exercise outside. It was cold. It was like 58 degrees. It was 58. And I was like, I have to bring my equipment inside. I cannot be outside tonight. I might catch cold. Like, this was a real issue. But big up yourself, Real Deal Spencer. I see you uh, showing love nice and early. Thank you for the super chat. Real Deal Spencer says, Suzette. If you think 50 degrees is cold, don't ever come to Illinois. Oh, my. I might take you up on that, especially northwestern Illinois uh, by the Mississippi. I can only imagine. Listen, that's why I live in Florida, y'all. My parents, when they emigrated from Jamaica, they tried New York first. As y'all know, big up to all the Jamaicans watching on Jamaicans.com. Let them know. The migration route is either to London, New York, possibly Toronto, but usually New York or South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So they went and lived with my aunt who had emigrated before them in New York. And that first winter, let them know, no, no, no. They were coming back down to Florida with their sister, their other sister. And thank God they did because we don't have to, maybe, I mean, you have the hurricanes. Y'all y'all worried about the alligators. We don't be worried about the alligators like that. We're, we're Florida people. We just know how to deal with it. I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but um, yes, the cold is something I, you know, only seen snow once in my life and I'm a grown person. I only have seen snow once because I really, I traveled, I think it was to Denver for conference. And I remember being like, every time I went to New York, it was summer. Every time I've been to the Midwest, it's been summer. I've been to Chicago. I've been to um, Cincinnati. I've been to these places, but it has always been summer. So I remember this was actually in law school going to uh, Denver for a law student conference. And I was like out the window like the cab driver was like, really? What you what you doing? What you doing? Like, is this is this how I'm like, I'm from Florida. This is amazing. It's snowing. So anyway, yes, that's a real Floridian story where we don't know nothing about that real deal, Spencer. But thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you again, Willie. Walk up, whistle, big up yourself with the super chat. No comment, just love. Thank you so very much. I have some of the best 
folks in my community. Thank you for all of my subscribers, all my Patreon members, all those who support this type of content. If you want positive, if you want uplifting, if you want um, self-edifying, right? Self-awareness, you know, this key word people seem to lack in our current uh, modern day age. We are uh, looking at people sometimes that can't read a room, much less themselves. So we're trying to do some work here. It's okay to know you don't know. So we're here to provide an environment where you can learn from each other and from, like I said, my guests. So hit the like button, big up yourselves. Thank you for being here. This is where it all starts. Just being present is what, as my friend Gaston's World, where you at Gaston's World would say, just being present for the conversation makes a bigger difference than you know. You come away with, and this is what I enjoy about this work, you come away with a different perspective. Hello, we changing the story today. We're looking at ourselves through a different lens. We're telling ourselves, I will tell you this story and I will um, bring my guests on. Y'all, I see y'all in the chat. One of my good friends, a good colleague, I remember going to her and I told y'all <clears throat> in the uh, interview I did with Before the Billions, I've only been golfing. I have not golfed recently. This is like when I tried to golf. Uh, that was a disaster. But I took like maybe five or six golf lessons. And I remember being at uh, a country club in a place called Hollywood, Florida. Uh, again. I am a beginner. I am not good at golf. I was going there to network, meet dudes, you know. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil, okay? I was there to meet, 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 meet um, possible uh, suitors as well as learn how to golf, right? So I go and then I say to myself, uh, you know, we had a, oh, we had a networking brunch afterwards. And then I have a friend girl who was there. And the first thing she says as we do the introductions is, you know, we're introducing ourselves to a room of brand new people. We don't know these people. And she says, oh, you know, I'm so-and-so. I'm a single mom. I, you know, uh, have a daughter, et cetera, et cetera. And then she went on about, you know, she owns an insurance company. She owns this, she owns that. And I kept thinking to myself, damn, that ain't the first thing you're supposed to say when you get up and you stand up and you have five new people in a, a golf course. Like, that's not where, where it is. So I had in love because we had a relationship. Remember, you cannot tell people everything unless you have a relationship. I had enough of a relationship with her. I was like, darling, love the intro. Um, but you are, I think, limiting yourself. And this has happened to me a couple of times. And, a, and a, real quick, I used to do live uh, monthly workshops for ladies uh, about you know personal development topics all the time for about two years. And that happened to me and in my live workshops too. Women would get up and be like, yes, I'm so-and-so. I'm a single mom. I'm going to do something that. I'm like, uh. it amazed me how we are defining ourselves and how we are allowing others to define us. And it also struck me that that moniker for all of its weight and burden, because I don't think it's like, hey, I'm a single mom. It's like a high five. You were saying it almost like as a scarlet lettery without even knowing it. And I thought to myself, look how deep this runs. Look how how uh, impactful it is. These people are now in their 20s and 30s and they're still using that label as an introduction to like strangers who didn't know you, girl, in for, at 14, 15 or 16 in high school. They know you now and you still carrying that. Anyway, I, I thought about that as I was preparing for today's discussion, how important it is that we look at what stories serve us and what story, stories don't. Many of us have allowed other people, other uh, times in our lives to uh, define us. And I want to say destroy us. Oh, my God, Sue, don't go hard. I'm going to go hard because I've struggled with it. I've had business failures. I've had other challenges where I'm like, God, I can either allow this to define me as, girl, you're not good at business or you're not good at um, um, understanding who your potential, you know, uh, folks you're doing business with, you, you're not good at discernment. You're not good at this. You got to stay out of that ring. Or sometimes those early failures can be the best thing that ever happened to you, depending on how you define them. Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't get me started. Thank you, Willie Walker. Was I see you? Salute to Mr. Real Estate. Also, a Patreon member, big up yourself, Sun Breeze. You wasn't here. I saw you. How you doing, Sun Breeze? Welcome. Thank you. Another fabulous. Uh, uh, can you, can we say, can you work in Louisiana? Is it cold there? I don't, <laughs> <it's> so funny. <laughs> you know what? Not messy so early. Please and thank you, Mr. Real Estate. I love it. He said, if Susan is speaking, I'm there. I appreciate you. Uh, one of my ardent supporters. He's also a content creator. I see you. He makes uh, appearances around these YouTube streets and you are so thoughtful. Uh, I'd be like, he need his own show. But guess what? He got his own show. <laughs> Mr. Real Estate, big up yourself because he's a deep uh, thinking guy. 
And I really think you're going to bring so much value to the YouTube space. Make up yourself, Mr. Real Estate. Go follow him. Oh, you do, Kimo? I didn't know that. English, Patois, French, French Creole, and Sp Bruh. Okay. Okay, my educated black brother. I see you. I got uh, Patois. <laughs> English patois <laughs> and maybe some Spanglish if I have to, if I'm in like Miami, deep, deep, you know, Ayalia and those places. <laughs> hey, what's good? Nice to see you, Rashad. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, uh, what's up, Rashad Denise? Thank you for being a fabulous guest last stream. If you did not watch the why, <clears throat> see, it's cold. <clears throat> Why did I get married stream? Go back, Michonne Denise, follow her. Uh, she, her link is in the description of my last show. She gave us a primer of what early marriage looks like, um, struggles and all. And I'm grateful for you sharing your story, sis. She's also a fabulous content creator in her own right. Hit the like button. And big up, Michonne Denise. Thank you for making uh, last show as fabulous as it was. I see you. Um, uh, big up yourself. No, it's not at two, baby. It's at 12. We said 12. 12. We said no, two o'clock. Uh, yes, Mr. Real Estate is super busy. Sun Breeze, thank you again for being here. My Patreon members, remember, we're going live right after. Give me a few minutes, but right after this, we're going to talk about breaking the pandemic isolation on Patreon exclusive chat just for my Patreon members. I'm excited to see you guys. Um, you're so sweet. Mr. Real Estate says, Kimo C, what can I say? I'm addicted to great intellectual discourse. Uh, so glad to discover folks like Suzette Speaks and Before the Billions. I appreciate you. That that means a lot because I, I can see you're a thoughtful brother and I and I respect you because I'm listening to you and I'm like, yeah, yeah, he done done a couple things and you're going to bring some value, sir. Thank you, Mr. Real Estate, for being a part of my community. I appreciate you. Gail at night is in the building. Gail at night. Burr, 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 burr. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Salute. <clears throat> it's the cold, y'all. My horns are a little off today, <laughs> but shout out to Gail at night. Fabulous content creator. Also moderator uh, for so many. Thank you, Gail at night, especially from them early, early days. Get help me get started over here. Y'all know I've just been YouTube since about October. So, uh, thank you, Gail, for showing me the ropes and for being here and supporting me through moderation and just being here in terms of the discussion. Thank you, Gail. Is also now a content creator. So, go support. You see it there, Gail at night. All right, y'all ready for um Y'all ready for my guest? Y'all ready? Portland, Oregon in the building. Portland, keep Portland weird. I love it. Thank you, Portland. Same as South Florida. Okay, Louisiana, same as South Florida. So I, I might be able to survive there. Oh, I see you, Harrison. Oh, what's good? Harrison Family Vlogs, long time no see. Class canceled today. I'm able to catch your live. Thank you. Fantastic content creators as well. Go over and visit Harrison Family Vlogs. I miss you. Thank you for being here and glad you could catch me. Greetings, greetings to you. And again, support. We support one another here on this platform. RM is busy. Real Deal Spencer again. Real Deal Spencer, don't start it. Thank you again. Patreon members, super chat sticker, no comment, just love. I appreciate it. Thank you uh, for all of my Patreon members. Y'all know. Thank you. I respect you so much. And I can't wait to have our conversation post this stream. All right. Yes. Oh, you got Mr. Real Estate. You starting Monday? Mom, new videos are coming. So hey, man, I can't wait. I know you got a lot to say. I cannot wait. So big up yourself. Y'all go over to Mr. Real Estate. No spaces. Mr. Real Estate and support. I'll be uh subscribing right after this. All right. My first time listening. Welcome, Shermel Grant. It's a pleasure to have you. My name is Suzette Speaks. I'm an attorney here in South Florida. Uh, I simulcast on Jamaicans.com. My parents are from Jamaica, migrated here years ago. So I'm a, I call myself the best of both worlds. I am a lawyer. I'm interested in law and politics, but I also am very interested in self-development. I have uh, done a lot of self-discovery in the last five, six years, and it has just changed my life. So helping others do it. Um, and doing it through others, because this is what I say. Y'all think I'm doing it for y'all, but I'm also doing it for me because more I help y'all. Some of those revelations hit home and I get my release. I get my breakthrough too. So we helping each other and I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Shermel, for being here um, at the Suzette Speaks, either on Facebook uh, or Jamaica.com, Facebook or Suzette Speaks YouTube channel. You can always find me on YouTube. I go live Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, three days a week. And I um, appreciate you being here. ATL before the billions. Thank you. I had a busy week on YouTube. I had an uh, interview with this gentleman. He had me on his show before the billions. Uh, just hit a thousand subscribers not too long ago. Also talking tech 
black men in tech. So much I've learned from watching you and listening to the, the panel discussions on Before the Billion. So big up yourself. And he did an exclusive interview of me. If you want to learn more about me, go ahead and check it out. It's on my community page. You're calling from, or you're calling from, hearing. You're watching from New York. Thank you, Shermel. Big up yourself. You're going Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, Mr. Real Estate, I see you. Sun Breeze, show some love, hit some like. Y'all ready? Get them likes up. My guest coming up. Get them likes up. St. Kitts in the building. Nice to see. Okay. So we got a whole Black diaspora here gathered. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Dallas in the building. I see you. All right. We got to get started, y'all. So once more, like the content. Welcome if you're just joining. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, I'm going to put up the cash app if y'all want to show some love. We ain't going to be mad. All right. So without further ado, my guest for today um, is a coach, is a, um, I would just call it a, a revolutionary, revolutionary thinker in terms of uh, redefining oneself. And I think that was why she is the most appropriate uh, person, not only from her corporate experience, 20 years in corporate America, uh, but now trying to help others forge a path that uh, allows them to fully express who they are, all their gifts and talents, and uh, which I say move in the purpose God has truly called them for. I think many of us, having been defined by corporate America for so very long, follow the rules, follow the standard operating procedures. When it comes time for you to Try to define yourself and do things for yourself. You lost. I'm not gonna lie. It can be it can be very daunting, and really, school and education has us conditioned that way. So when we're trying to step out, when we're trying to do our things on our own, we can be very lost. So it's wonderful that we have experts like her that can guide us in how we think about ourselves, how we relate to the world, what we say about ourselves, and more importantly, like our subject matter is for today. What are the stories we're telling ourselves? Do they serve us or don't they? And how can we change them? So without further ado, please welcome for the first time on the Suzette Speak Show, Miss Angela Durant. Yay. Go ahead and unmute. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Good to see you. Welcome. You. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. So I'm super excited to be on Suzette Speaks. I love the work that you're doing. And I just wanted to say hello and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you, my darling. Looking ravishing. Is it cold where you are? Where are you uh, logging in from? Yes, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm just outside of Philadelphia. So, yes, it is cold here. So, 50, you're in the 50s. We're, we're probably in the 30s here. <gasps> Child, okay, I really, okay, I shouldn't feel so bad. Okay, I don't envy you, and I, I'm glad you're here. I hope you're bundled up and warm, y'all. Uh, drop some comments, let her know, hit the like button. We're here to have a fabulous discussion about uh, stories that have you stuck. So before we get into that, let's get to know our guests. So welcome again, Angela. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your history, and what you do. Sure, absolutely. So I'm Angela Durant. I'm actually a brand strategist. Um, I'm also the creator of the Legacy Brand Method. Um, and I'm the founder of the Be Brilliant Movement, where I help professional women and brave entrepreneurs really build their brands from the inside out. Um, that's our unique methodology so that they show up really powerfully in business and in life. So that's what we do. Um, I'm really all about helping um, my clients be free, helping them embrace their choices. Um, um, we, via, the vehicle we use is branding, but we're all about, you know, supporting them and being brave because it takes courage to really live a life um, without limits. Right. Um, I'm about allowing them to or supporting them and finding the clarity that they need to navigate the world. Um, about them staying in their zone of genius so they can do work that they love with people that they want to serve. Um, and in the end, I'm really about helping people own themselves and positioning themselves to buy the freedom of others, right? Of the people that they love. So, um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, my background is in hospitality. So I worked as a hotel general manager, director of sales, and a regional tra trainer for many of the big brands that you would know, like the Marriott's, the Hilton's, the Hyatt's, the Wyndham International's. Um, and after almost 30 years um, in the hospitality business, um, hello, 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 thanks for the welcome. Um, after almost 30 years in the hospitality business, 
I transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship. And that's what I'm doing today. And I started that in 2019, um, just before the pandemic. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. So you have a breath. I, I mean, I read the bio, but I'm glad I need to be, brush it up because you have so many different um, uh, wheelhouses, if you will, um, in terms of uh, what you bring to your work now, which is to help uh, entrepreneurs. Like you said, you're a brand strategist mm -hmm. and you're helping entrepreneurs from the inside out define, hello, mm -hmm. you're in the right space, <laughs> define, you know, what it is they're, they're called to do through business mm -hmm. and otherwise. I love it. So, uh, so all this time in hospitality, you say 30 years, Yes, uh, almost, you, 30 years. almost 30 years. What did you learn? What was it like? Was it something that um, defined you and you were happy about it? Was it work that you took pride in? Some people are just working. Other people are like, I love when I go, even if it's to like a, I don't know, you call it like a, um, aesthetician. It's mm -hmm. some people that just bust the bump on your face. <laughs> it's other people that it's their calling y'all. This is what I want to be for whoever. And again, it's not about which career It's about, do you belong there? At, or wherever you're trying to express those gifts, it is some people that do it with such love. You'd be like, yes, lady, I want you to be on my face every time. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. tell us about your corporate side career when you were in corporate America. Uh, what was it like for you? Where were you mentally, spiritually, and just kind of in your growth space? How did it, um, did it help or hinder your growth? That kind of thing. Just talk about yeah. that life. Yeah, absolutely. It was amazing. It was amazing until it wasn't, right? It was amazing <laughs> in that, um, I was exactly where I was supposed to be as a part of my journey, right? I was exactly where I was supposed to be at the time. And what I talked to, you know, my audience is about is that we're in a place for a season, right? And nothing gets wasted. Everything is important. And all the things that I do today, I bring from those years of experience in corporate America. When I first started um, in the hospitality industry, uh, I loved it. I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get paid to do this work. Um, and it was, every day was different. I met a lot of different people and I, and people were mentored me along the way, took me under their wing and showed me how to do all kinds of things. Um, so it was wonderful. And I felt like, you know, over the years of being in hospitality, that I was exactly where I was supposed to be at that moment to get whatever it was that God wanted to equip me with for the future. Um, and then, you know, with, you know, any human being, you know, we're built to grow, we're built to flourish and prosper. And at some point, you know, when your assignment is complete in a certain space, we start getting restless. Like we know something is off, um, that it was no longer bringing me the joy that it had. And I remember, um, this was almost 15 years in, I remember um, riding to work with my husband, we were carpooling. And I just had the sadness and I just burst into tears. And my husband pulled over and he's like, what's wrong? What's the matter? And I said, I'm not happy. You know, I'm not happy. And, I, and if I didn't have to go into work today, I wouldn't. And he said, um, then don't go. Don't, don't go in. And I said, I can't. I, I can't. I've got a meetings. I've got a staff, a team of people who are depending on me. And so I put, pulled myself together and I went into to work. And I don't know if any of you have ever uh, worked for a challenging boss, <laughs> but I think that was kind of the, the catalyst of the change, right? So everything was good. The hotel was high performing. It was one of the top hotels in the portfolio. Um, and then I got a new boss. I got a new boss and um, it didn't matter what I did. Um, you know, I felt like I could lead and I could also follow. Like I could follow instruction. I could work for anybody based on my personality. I thought I could support and work for anybody. And he came in and it was just, it, it felt like it was very difficult to please him. I remember him coming to the property one day and we were walking through and he was you know, I was walking behind him with like notepad and pen. And he was like, this needs to change and that needs to be fixed. And this needs to change and that needs to be fixed. And I was like, okay, okay. And when, as soon as he left, I called my whole team together and we had a meeting and I'm like, all right, all hands on deck. These are the changes that our new, you know, regional director wants to see, you know, let's, let's take care of these. And we did, we, as a team, we pulled together, we took care of everything and we couldn't wait till he got back. Right. Couldn't wait till he came to visit the property again. And about two weeks later, he came back again 
And all of the team was like, they were like ready, like we got this, like we cannot wait till he sees the changes that we've made. And so he comes and we're all excited. And I walk through the property with them, with him. And, and I said, you know, this was on your check, on our checklist. We took care of it. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. But what about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. But what about that? And I remember him saying to me at the end of that property tour, he's like, it's not like I'm looking for things. And I was like, right. Okay. Right. So that was kind of the start of the end of the first transition of, um, of, of working for a company. Let me, let me pause you. I know y'all can relate. Drop a comment in the chat. Uh, that recently happened to me. <laughs> like um, um, my last time working for someone was just this. If you guys have ever had a job where the new boss, <clears throat> the new manager comes in and all of a sudden just changes up the game, makes a job that you really enjoyed. Like you turn it into like, uh, um, just, I don't want to say that. Ooh, H-E double hockey stick might be too <laughs> might be too strong. I'm trying to keep the, the stream monetized, y'all. But I, I think about the many times in which just a change of leadership can have you hating your job, a job that you once liked. I have a friend right now, a couple friends. One had to leave her job because her manager was so toxic. And even though she was the main one, they happened to only to be the only two black women on that job. It was very um, c suite corporate job, but her manager was obviously the manager and she was up, uh, on, on leadership levels too. But the, the crazy part was they, it was almost like she was the only one that her boss felt she could pick on. So it was very, it was weird this time. You know, sometimes people take advantage of their own. Some people pick on their own. It was very, she always had uh, that woman's uh, back as two black women, but she was very uncomfortable with her. And I'm like, I told her, I was like, we're all friends until you're afraid of me. <laughs> it's all good until you think, oh, she's really smart. She might actually be uh, able to replace me. That That's not my goal. I'm only here to do my job. But now you trying to put me on blast and trying to make me seem as if I'm incompetent or I'm not working or I'm not doing my job well. So this is a very common, especially on the corporate rise, <clears throat> where people can sense that you are good, can sense that you are uh, very smart, a go-getter, and, and really wanting um, to do well at what you're doing. And then there's leadership that kind of, I don't know. America is is good at quashing that and squeezing out that that beauty of just uh, eagerness and um, dedication from people by choosing bad leaders. I don't understand why they choose these people that suck to lead the organizations. But it's, I'm sorry. There was so much when you were talking. I was like, been there. Been yeah, there. I'm so glad you jumped it hurts. in. hurts. And I'm like, I liked that job at that firm. I also uh, teach part time. So when I'm teaching at like technical schools, I'm teaching online. It's like. I have a good teaching job. This is at my house. I'm good. And now you want to come and shake it up, ma'am. I don't need this, ma'am. I'm about to go do what I do. I recently had to do that with a, a, a specific uh, organization because I was like, this is too much. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. I, this is my give back. I'm, I'm sharing my knowledge with your, with your students. Like, calm down. But it, it's like some people don't want to see you happy. And that's why we do this work because some people are not happy within themselves. Mm -hmm. So they come to work after they leave home with they with they baggage. And it's like, it's not about us. And we have to remember, it's not about us. Drop a comment if you can relate. Sorry, there was so much in that story that I was like, ooh. Also in your story, I shared recently when I did that interview with Before the Billions, how I was crying at night, leaving a big firm. Uh, this is five, six years ago. And again, on the outside, you look polished. On the outside, you're an attorney, a big attorney. You have a good career and everybody's so proud of you. And you're living, quote, the dream. I knew that's why I got into this type of space. I got into media and then personal development because I was crying every night. And I was like, hold up, but I have it, I have it quote all, not all, I don't have a family yet, but you know, I have, you know, what so many consider the markers of success. And I couldn't bring myself, I was like, God, something is wrong here. If I can't sleep, if I'm crying myself to sleep, we got to have a little uh, uh, a gut check. So I hear you, sis. There's so much about your story. And if you can relate, drop a comment where the wake up call is real. The wake up call is like, whoa, 
how the heck did I get here? Did I choose this? this is this what I was choosing? Because I don't feel like I chose it, but you did. And now we got to work through that. So anyway, there's so much. If you could drop a comment uh, and you can relate, drop a comment and let us know. Again, I'm Suzette Speaks. Just want a quick reset because I see more people have joined. Welcome, guys. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I see you guys. Portland, Oregon in the building. New York is in the building. ATL is in the building. NOLA all over Pennsylvania. Our guest is in the building. So we're here. Uh, this is a Suzette Speaks platform, Suzette Speaks show. Uh, my special guest, you see her there, Miss Angela Durant is a brand strategist. And we're talking today about stories that have you stuck. And she's just given us kind of a primer of her early life in uh, corporate America. And I wanted to know what it was like so that we can understand kind of how she uh, built where she is now in terms of the company that is now helping entrepreneurs and others to define themselves through brands and kind of go out there and do what they want to do um, on their own now. So she's given us that. Okay, so I got the... I have been there, not so happy anymore at the job. I have been there, tears of like sorrow, figuring out what we're doing. Hubby thankfully said, baby, don't do it. If that make you feel like that, don't do it no more. Thanks for supportive spouses. And you can take it from there. So what happened next? What, where, where were you as you were getting uh, ready to transition? Yeah, so I wanna just put a something that you said made me think about, um, first of all, thanks for sharing your story too, because of course we see you and you're this attorney and you're doing amazing things. It's like, how could she not, you know, no. how could anybody even try to, you know, we're not about anybody putting our, their foot on our necks. Like we right. were all about really rising. So, um, the one thing around your stories, having you stuck and us not really recognizing, um, what, what the real, what the real deal is, is that. I wasn't, fo I was focused on pleasing him and focused on keeping my job, right? But I wasn't really looking at the evidence. And the evidence was that my hotel was ranked number three in the whole portfolio. My hotel was, was scored over a 97% in cleanliness, which is like white glove test. It's a very clean hotel, right? And I was nominated for hotel, for hotel general manager of the year and we won hotel of the year. Right. So I wasn't focusing on the evidence. Sometimes I tell my clients, you need to let's look at the evidence of what's really going on. And sometimes you think something's wrong with you. And so um, it can be a challenge when new bosses come in. And I will also say that that's the number one reason that people resign <laughs> and leave and don't ever come back. Um, but so I had this boss. Right. And so I. Um, it, so after his tour and him picking up additional things out that were wrong, I remember us having a team meeting and um, it was he and I and my whole like executive staff in my office having a meeting and he was making a, a recommendation on something. And I asked because the culture of the company was healthy. They always ask you to you know be curious always. Um, and I asked him about why we he would he recommends us that we add another hotel to our competitive set when they're not a true competitor, which I thought was a, was a, you know, a, a very good question. And he leaned in, looked at me in front of my entire team and said, you're going to do it because I said so. And I didn't really know how to respond to that. I may have chuckled. If you can see my face. Sorry. I was like, <laughs> and another one bites the dust. No, it's like they bring certain people to force people out their job. Mm -hmm. I can tell you so many stories of women who have told me this. I had a friend that worked a nice, you know, y'all have Carnival Cruise down here, all kinds of resort corporate headquarters are here in Miami. And she had a, I'm talking about a banking, I won't even say easy job, basically giving away vacations. And a new boss came and that lady had to move back to Bahamas. It was so frightening. Like within a year, she was basically pushed out of her job. And I don't know if that these people are, I don't know if you, sometimes people know people. Sometimes you wonder how these people got these jobs. They know somebody, it's somebody, uncle, friend, favor, whatever, whatever. Because if I if I just went on your own uh, personalities and skill sets, might not be in charge of anybody right now. <laughs> but this thing is real. This happens a lot. This happens a lot. I don't know if it's around the world, but particularly United, United States, this is not a unique phenomenon. But mm -hmm. wow. So you're reading the, the, the breadcrumbs. This man comes in and says, wait. I'm going to tell you what to do because I'm going to tell you, even if it don't make sense. Yeah. I said it. So, okay. Sorry. I had to just. Yeah, <laughs> and I, it, it is ingrained in my brain because I had never had anybody speak to me that way before. He said, You're going to do it because I said so. So, I'm going to go. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Then, okay. okay. So then the meeting wraps up. So then the <gasps> meeting wraps up. He gets up, opens the door, the entire staff, 
all my executive team leave the room. He shuts the door. He sits back down with me. He sits back, crosses his legs, and he says to me, it's no secret that you and I, we don't like each other. And I, I my heart sank because I, I knew he was, he was difficult to work with. I was like, you know, scrambling to try to meet his needs of, you know, what he's asking for. And I thought he's tough and maybe it was going to up my game because, you know, God's bringing in this guy who's really tough and I'm, maybe it's just going to make me better. But it never crossed my mind that he didn't like me. I, I didn't not like him. Yep. I, it personal. never even wow. crossed my mind. And then wow. he went in to say all these negative things like you're not a good leader, you're not this. And I'm and I never focused on so we're going to talk about your stories, the stories we tell each other and how to really combat that. But I never really focused on the evidence. I was just listening to the authority figure, you know, this person who's my boss. And I I had to leave the like I left literally left to go get some fresh air because I hadn't they literally recruited recruited me to come work there before this guy came. So the people who so you me, left your life, went to start this job, was yes. recruited, headhunted to come I and moved. work. I like uprooted myself and my family. We moved for me to work there. So after that, and it, it was probably just a I'm few not days. even living it. I'm here with you, girl. I'm here yes. with y'all. Drop a comment kind of if you can relate. Goodness gracious. And then you. here comes Mr. Uh, fill in the blank. We call, <laughs> him, Ike. We call him Ike. Ike. <laughs> On our campus, we call um, him Ike. <laughs> mess up people's life and start creating doubt. That's what that's mm-hmm. meant to sow. Meant to sow doubt within your spirit. Meant to sow um, just just a lack of confidence. Oh, yeah, God. So you I get just, this talking to. Right. And, and so, then it really like this kind of unspoken vendetta you didn't even know existed. <laughs> like, right. I'm here, I don't like you and you don't like me. So let's I go. Have, like, I've never heard any person in a professional setting. ever say it's no secret that we don't like each other. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know. I I just took it all in. I, I would have been shot, bro. I don't even know how I drop a comment. No, I don't know what I would have said. I didn't even know what to say. Lord. And so about, it was probably just a few days later, I had um, a voicemail message from a headhunter. And the headhunter said, we're looking for a seasoned general manager to run one of our properties in Princeton, New Jersey, which was not too far from where I was. And, um, and I would get messages from headhunters before, but I just, and this one left a lot of detail on salary and everything, like, please call us back. So I talked to my husband a few days later. I did not call them right back. I talked to my husband a few days later and I was like, oh, by the way, this headhunter called me and they're, um, they left a message about an, a job and, but I'm not going to follow up with them because that would be disloyal. So I just want you to know where my thinking was at the time because I was working with this company yeah, for almost girl, years. You on you on my playing field now. I, y'all thank you. Shout out to Kimo C for the cash app. Sorry, don't mean to interrupt the flow, but go ahead. Like I'm like I've lived this. Thank you for for just bringing all this to light because the corporate um what should I say politics mm-hmm. is real and having mm-hmm. moved for a job was recruited, not just found, you didn't found uh, them, they found you, mm-hmm. moved your life, hubby move, y'all move for this job. And then you get a boss who is on something. And then it's like, get a call from the headhunter. Thank you, I see new people have joined, come on in and she'll finish up. Go ahead, go ahead with this. Uh, I'm just, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so so um, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember where I left off. So um, yes, the headhunter calls you. You tell your husband a headhunter called me. Yes, and and I'm like, but I'm not going to call him back because that would be disloyal. And I've been with this company for almost 15 years. They know me. They're my family, right? This is my thinking. And he was like, "Wait a minute, you were just crying on the side of the road. <laughs> like when we pulled over in the car, you were crying. We need to. You need. You should at least hear with hear them out. Like you should at least send over your resume, right?" And I said, I don't even have a resume. Like I've been with this company for 15 years. I've never pursued anything. I've climbed the corporate ladder with them. And I, he, he was like, okay, give me the dates that you worked wherever you worked and I'll work on your resume. And, and you just go to sleep, right? You just go rest. And I did. And the next day and I woke up, my resume was done and it was tight. And I sent it in. And as soon as I sent it in, the headhunters were right on it. Like they they were on it so quickly that I had to, I called my references to say, hey, by the way, somebody may call you. And one person called me back and said, I'm so glad you left me that voicemail message that the references were in a call because they just called me, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> so the, the um the ball started moving pretty quickly and within mm. a few days I had an interview and the interview was actually set up on a Saturday. It was a phone interview with one of the was a, with the senior vice president of one of the largest hotel companies in the world, right? Um, today it's actually the largest hotel company in the world. And wow. then we were talking and and um we were having this conversation and you know he was presenting all of these different challenges that the property had where he, he was looking for a general manager for and i was really a great fit for that and it was challenges that i you know i had worked one place for a long time so i was ready for new challenges and by the end of the call he's i have just happened to say like where are you what what is this two i think it was a 214 area code and he said oh I live in um, Dallas and I go, oh, that's so funny. I'm I'm going there tomorrow. Like I'm flying there for a, a general manager's conference. He goes, really, where, where are you staying? I said, I'm staying at the Gaylord Hotel. He was like, I'm like 15, 20 minutes from there. He goes, why don't you check in? On, it was a Sunday. Why don't you check in and I'll come by and, and pick you up and take you for a second interview. And we could talk more about the, you know, the, the property that we're looking, looking for a general manager. So I was like, okay, sure. So I fly in. He picks me up. We go for another meeting, right? And the meeting goes well. It's exciting. The challenges are exciting. But but my thinking was, but can I really leave? Like, I, I know that there's an opportunity out there possibly for me, but I've been here for almost 15 years. And this is, even though it's painful right now with this boss, this is what I know, right? So at the end of the conference, and I didn't get an offer yet, but what he said to me was, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods next week because I've got hotels in your tier in your region. And I'd like to come by to see the hotel that you're currently running. And I was like, sure, absolutely. You can come anytime. Just let me know when you're in town. OK, so that was the end of that meeting with him. Right. And so um, I, I have the I'm at the conference in Dallas. I fly home from the and see everybody in Dallas. And when I fly home on that Wednesday. I said to myself, and you just need to work harder. You just need to push yourself. You need to do more, you know, do, you, you know, and I decided I wasn't going to leave. I wasn't going to e explore this other opportunity anymore, even though it's more money. I was just like, I, I know these people, you know, I've been here a long time. I'm not going to leave. That was my decision. So I fly, we fly home on Wednesday, Thursday morning. I go back into the office. And about, it was probably like 11, a little bit after 11. And I remember, cause I was looking at the, the, the clock when the phone call came through and it was Ike and let's just say Mike and Ike, right? Mike was, is Ike's boss. And they um, call me and they say, hello, Angela. I'm like, yes. Said, are you going to be at the property in the next hour? And I said, yes. And they said, well, our plane just flew into Philadelphia International and we'll be there in about an hour. And I said, are you specifically coming to see me? And they said, yes. And I yes, said, yes. okay. They said, can you um, set aside a corporate, uh, a, a conference room so that we can meet in private? And I said, yes. And well, I wait, where were you thinking in that moment? I already know what's happening. Oh, where were you thinking that? In, that in my heart, I'm like, you ain't coming to see me though. You ain't coming to see saw, me. We just saw each other. Yes, I was just in Dallas with them. They don't live in Dallas. They mm. made a flight out to Philadelphia to come see me. Right. So I knew this wasn't good. And I I picked up the phone. I called my mom. I was like, oh, my gosh, they're coming to fire me. That was, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you don't need to come do me like that. You don't yes. need to come. People take pleasure in these things. It's the weirdest power trip sometimes. The mm -hmm. lack of, uh, what should I say, empathy, humanity, uh, respect. Sometimes people take uh, a joy in uh, destroying other people. It mm -hmm. is very sick. It, and I think, again, you wouldn't know that taking a job there, how the the uh, corporate leadership operates. But this is a very big thing that we have to, I don't know if headhunters can even teach you that or, or find out about it before you move, because this is the saddest part. I, I've joined several you know, firms where I'm like, if I would have known how the owner, a head partner was, I wouldn't have come over here. Like I've had great firms too, don't get me wrong, but it's so hard to tell from the interview or the tour or the walkthrough, if you're gonna get someone whose values reflect yours or if you're going to get an idiot who's going to be like, you know, um, us versus them and, you know, uh, I know a cutthroat environment. I find that so toxic. Mm -hmm. So you hear this, we're coming to meet you. You're going to give 
a room. Yeah. We're coming specifically for you. You call your mama. You're like, mama, they finna come and find me. Yes, I totally was. I totally, you was like, just, I hear what you just said and I know what's coming. So what happens next? That's so scary. So what? she just said, let's pray about it. Mm. And we did on the phone. And she's like, "Every doesn't matter what happens. Everything's going to be okay. You know, that's mm -hmm. what, what your mom was saying. Thank you, like, mom. <laughs> you know, my, and it, it felt like, you know, they were probably 45 minutes away, but it felt like they were 10 minutes away, right? So I hung up with her. Before I knew it, boom, they were there. They were marching me into a conference room. They sat me down and they said, Angela, um, the company is moving in a different direction. Effective today, you will no longer be employed here. They came all the way over there for that. Yes. That is so, I hate those people. Yes. God forgive me. I don't hate nobody, but that, <laughs> that, that is the most despicable. Yeah. This is, this reminds me of the CEO that was written about, I think it was last year, end of last year, who fired people on a Zoom call. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. That it was like a thousand people and, the, and basically he called these people to come on a Zoom and he was like, if you're on the Zoom, you're going to be fired. I hate the fact that, I don't hate the people. I hate the fact that they take pleasure in it because that could have been an email that could have been a phone call in and of itself. We we thank you for your service. Please pack up your things by five, and we'll you know send you uh, uh, your severance or whatever. But instead, they wanted to come in your face. They wanted to see your reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like people get off on that. God forgive me if that's not their intent. But this is what I think of when I hear these type of stories where people are like reveling in the moment to to drive up and be the the mean CEO. Like, are you Daddy Warbucks? Calm down. Calm down. And that often happens when people don't expect to have the success they've had because true character will always rise to the top. Mm -hmm. So this is who you really are. Mm -hmm. Like whether you were at the McDonald's or whether you up here doing whatever, That's this right. is who you are. It's very sickening, right? And money just brings it out more. Anyway, keep going. So they come yeah. and they make this big pronouncement. You are no longer, oh my God, did yeah. you cry? What did you do? Right. So here's the deal. So I'm human, right? I'm human. <laughs> and here's the deal. And I'm sure your audience knows have heard the term at will. Yeah. Right? So that you can be let go for any reason or no reason at all. So That's I can't have any, no documentations in my file. Like there was nothing. Right. And so I said, well, can I think about this? And there and they said, there's nothing to think about. Effective today, you will no longer be employed here. And then I said, because I had an amazing team, I said, well, can I at least say goodbye? to my team. And they said, what you can do is, this is what Ike said. Ike said, what you can do is you can go pack your things and we will be meeting with your team throughout the day. We will let them know. So it's then, sick, so, I, so I did not, I did not it's cry in the Ooh. moment, right? I did not cry in the moment, but you know, I was like fighting back tears. Like, you know, you know we got that pride, but we look. <laughs> so I, I went to my office, I closed the door, I closed the blinds. And of course, the waterworks, yes. right? I was really hurt. I was really hurt. And I, I felt humiliated because it's like, oh, now what? So then I go to my computer because I'd like to tell all my colleagues, I've been working for this company almost 15 years. And there's a mass email that went out to everybody that basically said, you know, like, that I've, I'm taking on other opportunities. But so yeah, they yeah, beat yeah, you yeah. to the punch, basically. Yeah. Yes. People I are sadistic, bro. They I don't couldn't even tell anybody. Like, it was done. It was done. So I started packing up my things. You know, I started, you know, boxing up. Let me get my face off this camera. camera. Hold on. Let me get my face off because I'm sick. <laughs> Ooh, y'all. I, I like crazy. seeing your reactions, Suzanne. Because <laughs> <laughs> listen, I've been here. I've been either through myself or through good friends. Mm -hmm. This is not unusual, y'all. I've met people smooth sailing in a career. Next step, next step. And boom, that one boss that totally turns their career on its head and you have to learn how to deal with some uh, idiocy and ineptness and, and incompetence and, and, and it and totally can derail you if you're not careful, if you're not strong on the inside. If you're not strong, these people will destroy your self-confidence and that's their goal. Like you said, humiliation was their goal. Who does that? That email was prepped. That was like, we're going to sit down and press send. These people are oh scary. Anyway, so you get this mass uh, shock to the system, a company right. you've been with 15 years, yeah, vested in so much so that you're like, I want to give it another try and be loyal because they've been so good to me, even though you have these new uh, mm -hmm. kind of leaders, if you want to call them that, are, are, are trying to make your life hell, trying to put you down, trying to make you feel small. And you know you're not that what they're telling you. 
uh, here comes the the act, <laughs> chop mm -hmm. you, in like in the most really really humiliating way. Don't get a chance to say goodbye. Sent the email already. All this foolishness flew in just so they could do it in your face. Mm -hmm. This but is. The, but the thing is, is that you know I I believe that God can close doors that no man can open. Okay, I'm off my. Okay, I'm I'm back. I'm and back. he can open <laughs> doors that no man can close. Right? No, it's real because they got to be careful. They say mm -hmm. when you there's a Jamaican saying. When you dig a grave, dig two, babe. Go ahead and dig yours. Don't ever think that that what we call reap what you sow. Uh, other people say karma goes around, come around, whatever you call it. Be careful how you treat me. I'll see you on the way down. <laughs> so it's it's people think they get away, quote unquote, with this type of behavior, but they don't understand. They it's gonna come back to you, right? So uh, I'm just sorry. I'm very, I'm very because it just hits home. You're not the first woman who I've heard with this type of story. And it's and it's a lot actually, and it's scary when it happens to you. You could be at this dream job, dream company, all the things that you had planned to retire from, all of this, you know. And then the one person can say no for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and we don't want to say it, but it can be a gender animus, mm -hmm. it can be a racial animus. Mm -hmm. Like I know they would say nothing can stop you in America. Okay, all right, if you say so, okay. Yeah, okay. and I think and and to that, like I've never I've had people say. Like, do you need one? Like, right after as it was happening, do you want to get a lawyer? Do you I think? I would have said. <laughs> do you think it was racist? Do you think like they were saying? Girl. Those things? I can tell you. I think he was a southern guy, you know, and I think his issue was that I'm like this confident woman. I have ideas. I'm expressive. You got I a lot of melanin. I have a lot of melanin, and I think I think there were some undercurrent things there you don't want to say it sis but we know right i hear you but we know <laughs> I've, I've okay we can leave it right there but we know right. we know right. welcome welcome uh to uh the us of a <laughs> where right. we love liberty and justice for all but sometimes right. we got some jokers that don't want justice for all we got people who still <laughs> want us at the back of the bus in the back of what you you think you're leading you think you're gonna have a good career here nope we're gonna give it to someone that looks like me anyway i'll leave it alone it's not yeah. everybody it's not everywhere and it's not all the time but it's very real it's very real okay so but you, you would have been one of my if i had known you back then you would have been one of my sisters i would have picked up the phone and said this is what's going on i would be like girl i got an employment lawyer ready let's go <laughs> like i would have been down i would have been down right now because anytime i hear this um uh, uh, friends of mine with apartments and things at the time, like when we were moving out and going in our you know own directions, and it was like you got an apartment, but then when I show up, all of a sudden you ain't got one. Oh no, 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 we're not playing that. We're gonna file paperwork, and then you're gonna pay me for not having my apartment. So, yeah, this is real. Discrimination is huge when it comes to workplace, and it is a violation of federal law. So we we gotta be, you know, just speak the truth on it. Okay, so you you decide not to take legal action. Not, yes, to, not to take legal action. I'm oh in my, my office. I'm in oh. my office packing my things. Mm. They're starting to bring in the staff into this conference room to tell them that I'm no, no longer employed there. Mm. Mm -mm. So while I'm packing up my things and putting them in the trunk of my car, right? And my office was like, you know, like anybody's office, right? We have family photos, we got awards from all the things you won over the years. You know, all your accolades are there. So I'm, I'm packing my car. I'm back. Then I come back into the office and the phone rings. And, I, and clearly my um, tears are still dry on my on my cheeks. And um, uh -huh. I answer the phone. Mm. And, and I don't know who you can imagine it was. But it was the gentleman. His name is Sean. Um, who says, hi, Angela. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm great. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. How are you, Sean? Oh, the guy who you had met who had said, hey, you were thinking about coming to Dallas. I have a job for you. That Sean. Okay. That's Sean. Woo, right. And shout That's out to Real Deal Spencer. Thank you for the love. Appreciate you. So Sean calls, when God closed the door, my Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Another one will open. What mm -hmm. they mean for evil. Oh, my. Don't let me go. Let me go. Let, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes. So so I can laugh about it. I can rejoice in all of it today. Ooh. But in the moment, I'm sure it was painful. It mm. was very painful. Mm. Uh, so so Sean, so Sean says, well, I'm in town. I'm here and I would love to come and tour your property. I want to see the hotel you're currently running because, of course, he's considering me for this other position. And he says, will you be there till the end of the day? And I said, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be here till the end of the day. And he goes, okay, great. I'll call you when I'm pulling into your parking lot. I hang up the phone. Wow. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. 
Like, how what, How am I going to manage this? What am I going to do? So I immediately text my team because I had an amazing team. I, I, I text the managers and I said, listen, guys, someone named Sean from, you know, this hotel company is coming to see me. If he gets, I'm going to step out and go have lunch <laughs> um, just to buy myself some time. If he gets here before I get back, put him in a different conference room and tell him that I'll meet him there. Um, and they're like, we got you, Ange. No worries. We got it covered. So I leave the property for a little bit. I come back. He's still not there. And then maybe 15 minutes after I get back, he calls and says, I'm parking. <laughs> I'm pulling into the parking lot. Now, Mike and Ike are still in the conference rooms telling people that I'm not, no longer there. Hold up. So this is like <laughs> real time. God is amazing. This has happened to me in a different sense, not for a job, but I had lost a leadership position that I'd gone for in an organization Again, Ebony for um, what they call it, bad mind people. That's a Jamaican term for haters. <laughs> Stand up if you ever or drop a comment, drop a one in the chat if you've ever seen bad mind people operate in your life. They you don't do them nothing. You have no, you're not even in competition. You don't even know that they exist, mm -hmm. but they just hate you, or they just don't like you, or don't want to see you go far, or they watching every move you make, and you just trying to live your life in the bad mind people. The haters just mm -hmm. come out of the woodwork. And as you, and I can only imagine, this happened to me similarly. You are in literally the lion's den of people that's trying to shut down your, your spirit, uh, 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 put out your light, try to make you feel low, try to do it in a publicly very embarrassing way. And at the same time, God is literally sending that angel who said, we got a job for you. Are you at your old hotel? I'll come mm -hmm. and pick you up. So mm -hmm. I can imagine the tumultuous uh, emotion going on. And this has happened to me. And I'll give you a quick, 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 because I don't want to interrupt your story. But I, I lost the position. Even uh, basically a bunch of my supporters came late to an election and the bad mm -hmm. people got uh, their person in by one vote. I was so uh, devastated because I would already had been planning for the leadership role and everything that I would be doing in that year. And it's so weird. I was like, God, this is like too much. At the same time, I was uh, asked to right after uh, that meeting or a so-called meeting, I was uh, uh, asked to MC a woman's conference. And when I tell you the pain that I had from the moments of like, like this is surreal, only eight people are here and they're going to vote me out <laughs> or I'm going to lose five to four or whatever it was. The pain from which I was able to release at that women's conference. Let me tell you, some people in life got, got changed and got illuminated, got, 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 I'm talking about toe up from the floor up and put back together. The power that was in my spirit mm -hmm. after what had happened, the destruction, the sadness, the disappointment, and then to step into a place of grace where I was like, oh no, y'all thought that was my assignment. Clearly this is my assignment. We're going to take it to a new level. How about that? Mm -hmm. So the movement from one disappointment directly into like the opportunity, I get goosebumps. I literally, if y'all can see, I literally have goosebumps thinking about it because you can't think that God could be doing something in this mess where literally your worst moment, you are devastated. You are embarrassed. You are feeling so low. And then the next moment, he just pick you back up right away. And you're like in front of people. And you're like, Sean, come right away. I'm ready. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is so good. So keep going. Sorry. <laughs> There's so much I can relate to. But yes, and, on, darling. and in those moments, you know it's God. Because yes. what? Did, what? Right? So, so, um, so he's parking. So Sean is parking. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, please just let them leave. And I hear their wingtip shoes coming across the lobby floor. They're saying goodbye to the people at the front desk. They pop in. So Mike and I come into my office and Mike says, Angel, we wish you all the best. And Ike says, if you're lucky, you'll get another job before your severance runs out. Oh, they didn't even. And I'm know. like, they didn't even. Thank you, Mr. Real Estate. Very, very good, uh, astute um, <laughs> comment here. No, no, no. They was planning for you to suffer and be begging back. But right. they don't know your God. Not they at all. Planning, they was planning for you. And shout out to all those show sponsors, Willie Walker, Whistle, Doug, Real Deal Spencer, Uncle Stu, Old Man on the Block, Kimo, and Ebony. Thank you for my show sponsors today for giving. And do your donations are, are heartfelt. Thank you so much Um, or received in a heartfelt way. Yo, they was ready for you to beg. They was ready for you. This black woman. Oh no, 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 no. She, you'll be lucky if you get another job before your severance runs out. Oh, but I, you didn't know. I was like, drive up in this. <laughs> right. And I was like that. I, I was like, 
that's like uh, you're trying to kick me while I'm down, basically, right? Basically. But God is not mocked, right? Mm-hmm. He's not. So, so, so all I could think of in the moment was like, please, like get out of here because Sean is coming. Literally, when I tell you, this is that the electronic doors opened. Mike and I walked out and in walked Sean. He came in, we ushered them into my office. And he was like, wow, your office is so clean. And like, yes, so- because I'm cleaning it out. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say it, but I'm like, no, yes. no, you're like, oh, yes, oh, I keep the office. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes oh, you got to hold it together. <laughs> yes. We oh, walked yeah, 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 yeah. And my team, they were on point. Like they were on, like standing at on post, like saying, hello, so great, glad to meet you. And they were like, Angela, do you need this? Here are keys to the showrooms. Here's this. Like they just rolled out the red carpet, my staff. They were amazing. So I toured him and he was like, this is a, a, a beautiful property that you're running. You know, we're going to make you an offer. And, you know, it, it took, I think it was 12 days later, I was already working in my new job. And that's only because. That's only because they had to do, you know, the background checks, the drug right. checks, all that. Yeah. But but literally, they made me an offer the next day. And so I didn't become an entrepreneur that day, but my entrepreneurial spirit was born that day. Mm. And the reason is because for 15 years, I tied, you know, all the things that I was doing to my identity, to who I was and to my value. You know, I thought as I climbed the corporate ladder, you know, the more I climbed the corporate ladder, the more I felt good about myself. People would meet me and say, well, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm like, well, I run hotels for a living. Like I, I was always proud of that, but I made that about who I was. And what I learned in that moment was that it's not the job that makes you remarkable. It's not the the doing, doing all the things, going back, getting all the degrees, doing all that. It wasn't that. It was the being who I was that attracted opportunities, that opened doors, that, you know, allowed for team members to support me because of who I be. Yes. That's why you say be brilliant. I love it because I think also for our men in the chat, this is very big when you get into marriages. So I've read that (laughs) men tend to, you know, you are very attached to your work as a part of what defines you. And if anything happens to that work, it can be a, a total destruction of, of, of identity, of yes. self-worth, mm-hmm. of understanding where you belong in the world. So you too face this. And mm-hmm. you too had to say, it wasn't just because I could say, I run hotels and I run the biggest hotel in the in the city or wherever, in the country, wherever. Mm-hmm. I also just am fabulous be, just being. I see the be brilliant now, just being. Right. Just you be- were you before the title. You were you before the degrees. You were you before the big positions. And that's very hard, especially us as uh, as Americans. We get very tied into the work defining our value. Yeah. Defining our worth to society, the law degree, mm-hmm. meaning mm-hmm. something about yeah. who I am, but it ain't who I am. Yep. And when the rug gets pulled from underneath you yes. and you say, well, who am I without this? Boy, who boy. am I? That's when the rubber meets the road. (laughs) That's when it's really like, well, who am I for real now? I don't have the big position. Am I worthless? Am I, am I nobody? And that I'm telling you, people struggle when some of these big titles get ripped right from underneath you and you face this. So you are now into a space where, so you get the new job and I'm sure it was much better. (laughs) Yeah. So one of of the things that I want to say around, you know, our stories having us stuck is that wherever you go, whatever you do, you take your brilliance with you, right? So, um, and your gift will always make room for you. Mm. Sometimes people might li- not like you, but they will work with you because they want your gift. Amen. And so we got to just understand that, you know, I always say that, you know, um, as far as the stories, you know, help people escape the stories that have them stuck you know, escape the beliefs that are limiting them. Yeah. Opportunity was always there for me, but yeah. I I was putting limits on myself. Like nobody else was putting limits on me oh and goodness. helping them escape the environments that want them to play small. Wow. Right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Say, say that again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I help them escape the stories that have them stuck, mm-hmm. escape the beliefs that are limiting them and escape the environments mm-hmm. that want them to play small. You just, you just, you just spoke to my heart, the environments that want you to play small. 
the environments that want you to play small. I've been in environments that want me to dim my light to suit them. Mm-hmm. They not they want me there because my light bright. Mm-hmm. They want you there because your light is bright. People want the, the the to get into the um Christianese. People want your anointing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they don't, they mad it's on you. Yeah. <laughs> and I will tell you the thinking that had me stuck was oh. I have a mortgage to pay. I have a car note to pay. Will anybody ever, like I've worked for 15 years, so I've built my salary over 15 years. Will anybody else pay me this, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Will I have to take a salary cut if I go somewhere else? What if I'm not as good as I think I am? Maybe I'm thriving here, but can I thrive someplace new? Like that was all the thinking that had me stuck. And let me just tell you, Suzette, Mm -hmm. that opportunity paid me. A year later, I made almost double what I was making in that current job. So I was holding on, like white knuckling it, holding on <laughs> to, you know, crumbs when they're, when God has something even better for me. And so those are that we just need to be aware. Wow. Yes, of, yes, yes. You know, really, because, you know, I always say to each, each of us, a gift is given, right? Scripture tells us that. Yeah. And that you, we all have something. And now more than ever in this pandemic, People are like, not this is the great resignation. People are leveraging what they have to build the life they really want. That opportunity was always there. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm in a in a sorry, I'm reading my comments, I'm listening to you. I'm trying to <laughs> process what I'm feeling about this. Y'all been in environments that have you playing small. I don't know. i I have in the past, not in there now, but I have in the past and it hurt. Especially, I think, in our uh, formative years here in the States, when you're very young, people take advantage of you. I don't know why we eat our own. I don't know why we do that. Uh, But people see, specifically in their 20s, people are going to be, you know, uh, low cost workers and we exploit them Uh, in our culture our capitalistic culture, we tend to exploit them and oftentimes rob them of the joy and the fire. And they start getting into this kind of like, uh, I know for me, just just very, um, I don't want to say pessimistic when it comes to work worlds, but just tired of the politics before you turn 30. You're just tired of the politics. You're just like, Lord, I'm over it. And is this for me? And you lose the joy of like work is supposed to bring you some modicum of joy. Some people are like, the same as uh, what you described. We're afraid of the mortgage payment not being made. We're afraid of the, the car note. We're afraid of all the things, all of the adulting that we must do. We are white knuckling. And I like that, mm-hmm. the holding on to way less uh, uh, than beneath our privilege. Mm-hmm. And we don't even know it. Because we're defining ourselves by uh, an environment that has told us this is what you're worth. Mm -hmm. And before we can kind of step into, as you said, just this God literally opened one door right after closing another one. Um, One has to be aware of their value. One has to unhinge, unattach, separate their value from that particular job, Mm -hmm. degree, whatever, Mm -hmm. in order to be able to be open enough to say, wait a minute, there could be more for me. There is more for me. Um, so I love that um, expression as as far as um, not knowing there's a whole faith walk in this, <laughs> not knowing what was going to be right around the corner. It's very it's very strong. Like that that is a is an example of you know faith uh, working it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also want to talk to you about other stories that you have told yourself that had you stuck. Mm-hmm. What are some of the stories? And you've been touching on it here now. And y'all drop a comment if you if you guys can relate. Uh, not only in this previous job, <laughs> did you think I would lose my big old income and now you've been paid twice as much or whatever when you, right. when you left, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, there's something about me that mm-hmm. maybe I'm not doing well, which uh, people love to make you feel insecure. People love mm-hmm. to th- make you think you're not measuring up. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but you haven't given me anything specific. And when I was in a firm, uh, big firms. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I rarely, but I have come across one boss similar. And I'm like, but you haven't given me anything concrete that I'm not doing now. Right. Really? Right. Anything because my whole team loves me. You know, all the paralegals <laughs> love me. I have people be in my office asking for help more than anybody else on this floor. So I'm not sure what your problem is, right. but, you know, but it, it is it is intended to break you down. So whether they came from within or without, where are, or tell us more about some of these stories that have had you stuck in your past. Yeah. So I often share this dream that I had, right? So, um, cause my mom always says that a message or 
you know, comes to you first. It's for you. And then you can share with other people. So I had this dream and I don't typically have dreams that I remember, but this one like really stood out to me um, because it was so bizarre. Right. So um, it was about it was a a dream of this. um, There was this big table, this big, long table, like King Arthur's table um, with really tall legs. And um, on the table was this abundance of food, like from end to end, there was anything you could possibly imagine. And around the table were all these empty seats and place settings. And at the t- at the head of the table was the Lord of the house, right? And he was, and to his left was this little dog and he was feeding scraps from his plate to this little dog um, who was on the floor next to his, next to the table. And then underneath the table on her knees, was this woman and she was crying out for help. She was begging for food. She was really hungry. She was begging for food. It was again, this really tall table. So she was on her knees underneath this table. And I remember in the dream that, you know, the Lord of the house was feeding the scraps off his plate to this dog. And then he heard the cry of this woman and he turned and he looked under the table at her. And then he turned his back away from her and continued to feed this dog. And then I woke up. Right. And of course, I called my mom was like, I had this dream. It was disturbing. I'm not really sure what it meant. She's like, well, what do you think? What do you think it meant? And I was like, I don't know. But the God I serve tells us to, you know, be compassionate, to to feed the hungry, to clothe the poor, to help where we can. Why would he ignore her cry? Why would he not help her? There's an abundance of food. Why would he feed the dog and not the woman? Right. And then in that moment, I said. I got it, mom. I said, um, I wouldn't feed her either. And my mom was like, what? Why would you say something like that? Why would you say something like that? And I said, it's because she doesn't know who she is. She's not a dog that she should be begging for crumbs and scraps from the table. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't be. Her position is not under the table. There's a place for her. There's a seat for her. You know, she's to inherit everything that the Lord of the house has and abundance is her birthright. So why let me get up and start running around this room. Please do not give me. (laughs) So why is she on her knees, Suzette, begging for something that's that something else is like that an animal is getting that's not even meant for her. But in order for her to have what she's entitled to, she has to rise up and take her place. She has to be in the right position. And she has to know who she is because if she knows who she is, she's not going to be on her knees under the table begging. She's going to sit at the table because there's a seat for her. And so I know that that message was for me because I was like, you know, oh, well, like because I always wanted to do like, let me prove myself. Let me do, 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 you know, and then I'll get the respect and then I'll get this and then I'll be valued. Well, I'm already valued. I'm already valuable. And I don't have to do any of those things. I could just walk into a room and I'm valuable. Right. And wherever I go, my brilliance goes with me. Some people might not be able to appreciate my brilliance, but that's okay. I'm not for them. Right. That's okay. I'm not for them. But things look very different. Your perspective is very different when you're under the table. Right. When your environment that want to make want you to play small, they'll tell you like that's your place. Beg, you know, you sit, stay in line for the scraps. But the person that I serve tells me that, you know, I'm to inherit all of these things and that abundance is my birthright. So why can't I just rise up, take my seat and partake in other things? Right. And so I tell people who are stuck in jobs that they hate, not everybody hates their job. Some people love their jobs. And when I moved to the next job from that, I still worked a job. I wasn't an entrepreneur yet, but the way that I moved was different. Mm. You know, I knew there was a comp, there was an inner knowing that no matter what happens, if a, if the president of the company comes and he doesn't like me, I'm still good. I'm still good. Yeah. You know? So um, I think understanding that, um, understanding and knowing who we are, right? When we know who we are, when we have that clarity, we don't settle for scraps. We don't allow ourselves to be mistreated. People can't just talk to you any old kind of way, right? You don't allow, there are certain things that are, will be out of alignment for you, right? And so those are, that was something that was really pivotal for me. That was a message for me first that now I share with, you know, the people that I meet. 
Y'all, if y'all y'all getting something, I hope y'all getting something out of this. I am, I am, like I said, it, it is a reminder because I have been here where um Shermel, I see you. She said, What great confirmation. Um, this dream dreams is real. And I have not always dreamt dreams, but sometimes when I dream them, I'll be like, whoa, 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 what's happening? Um, so to 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 be um aware enough that this meant something. Uh, I, there's a message in there and then we need an interpretation. There must be an interpretation. So your interpretation came and to see yourself. Um, I was like, is she the master? Is she the Lord? Is she giving it to the dog? Is she not? And she's the woman or whatever, but to be able to identify that so many of us, it's a beautiful allegory. Um, don't see ourselves with a seat at the table. Table. Yep. And I was like, I had to tell myself, get up, get off your knees. Like, why are you on your knees? Mm -hmm. Like God has given you talents. He's given you these gifts, these talents. Yeah. You're, you're rising in the corporate ladder because yes. of your talent. Exactly. Like, you already have it. Why are you on your knees? Yeah. But so many of us, let me tell you this thing called social conditioning. I know we have had a big discussion over on before the billions about it. This social conditioning from our ancestors. I'm not even going to start there, but I have to. Uh, oftentimes we as people of color do not see ourselves the way we ought. And the, the, the environments that we're in can promote this idea that you should just be happy for with what you have. The environments that we're in can be very, very difficult to navigate. So how did you start to change? When did you start to realize that ain't me? I'm not going to be under the table. I'm not going to be begging for scraps. Um, we don't uh, value ourselves enough. How do we start to change? What What about that dream now led you to start to reimagine yourself, reimagine your value and change your narrative, change your story? So one of the things was knowing that I never, ever wanted to be in a position ever again where my finances, my fate, you know, whether I could pay my mortgage was in the hands of anybody. Like I never wanted to have a, a boss who had his foot on my neck that I had to, you know, if, if, if he decided on a whim that he didn't like you, that he could let you go. Like I never wanted to, I always wanted to make sure that, that I make those decisions and so um, for me, so that was the, that was one of the, you know, it was an evolution, Suzette, really. And then I had um, another job where I was my, one of my last jobs when I was working um, as a general manager and I had a team. And I remember there was commotion coming from my director of sales' office and she had, they were celebrating because she had just written a children's book. And, um, and then, and I was like, I didn't even know you were a writer. She goes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a director of sales, but I love writing. And it was so amazing. And the book's called Here Comes the Rain. It's about a little African-American girl with natural hair. And, um, and then there was a, a, an assistant that I had, an assistant general manager who could do, she was amazing. She was good at what she did, very, very competent, but she was amazing at event planning. And whenever we had events, she would do them in-house for us. And then on nights and weekends, she started doing it on the side, right? And she could take one thing that, you know, one, a book or something that inspires you and create a whole beautiful theme around it. Um, she's dope. Like she does my live events now. Um, just amazing. And there was someone else who like was like, I love to clean. I love to clean. She started a janitorial business on the side. And I was driving home from work one day. And I had this epiphany that, you know, these people are competent at what they do, but they've got these gifts that are amazing. And if they could just operate in their gifts, you know, there'd really be no, no limits, right? And so I have thought of, I was inspired by scripture, um, by Matthew um, chapter five, where it says that light should never be hidden. Because I felt like their talents were hidden, that light should never be hidden. Um, it's never placed under a basket or a bushel, but it's placed on a, on a stand so that it can give light to everybody in the house. And in that moment, the Be Brilliant movement was formed. That idea was like, everybody's brilliant. To each of us, a gift is given and we're to use those gifts, right? And so that's when I started to say, we need to focus on what we're really good at. Right. And I, you know, I really want to work with people who want to leverage all that they know and the talents and skills to create really a life of freedom for themselves. Um, so that was kind of the evolution 
um, into the Be Brilliant movement. Fantastic. That is so amazing. I hope we helping y'all. We helping somebody. Please, thank you. Hit the like button. Um, we are going to drop the link. We have about a few minutes left. I, I want to um, invite you. If you were stuck in a story and if you're not sure how you're going to break that story from um, impacting your life going forward, I think there's so many of us. Life is too short to live in the past, y'all. Life is too short to be defined by others. Mm -hmm. You know, life is too short to not be true to one's true purpose and calling and to find out who you really are. I, I one of y'all, um, some of y'all keep asking me about, and I just dropped the link. If you want to come up and make comments, come now. Um, you know, Sue, you, you, you've you been dating a while. How come you never found nobody since y'all in my, my, my business? Um, I'll tell you. <laughs> One of the most difficult things for myself, and I'm working on me, it's not always about the gentleman, it's, it's about me working on me too, is I find there are people who don't know who they are. I find it is nothing more disappointing than a man who don't know who he is. It's nothing more, especially when you can see greatness in him. And it's not a critique. I'm talking about observation. As you talk, and I always just let what flows across my mind. Um, and it's for myself as much as it is for the other person. I think about God, help us to know our value. You won't value me until you value yourself. The women you choose are a reflection of how you think about yourself, what you want, what you, what your values tell you is important. And it, and it is hurt. It hurts a lot when I meet people and it's very like, you still searching or you still ain't grown up yet. You still don't value yourself enough to say, yo, I'm going to pick somebody who's going to like, uh, um, I don't know, just build me in a different type of way. And it's not a critique. Again, it's an observation of how I sometimes come across good people who don't really uh, value themselves and therefore don't know uh, where they're going and how I would fit in with them. It just, it's just what it is. You can go on 10,000 dates, but you can't, sorry, outside the Hellcat is going, but you can go on 10,000 dates, but it, it's quick. I see you in the back, Mr. Real Estate. Thank you for coming up um to to understand and you could call it i'm I'm talking about romance you could do that in friendship mm -hmm. yes you could do with office colleagues it don't matter i'm just talking about the, the relationships that impact you most and that's what we're going to talk about on patreon right after this is um you know there's something about being healthy within oneself so that you can be healthy within whatever context like you were saying at your job you went into the next job mm -hmm. like um ain't nothing y'all could do to me right here mm -hmm. i'm gonna just be brilliant Mm -hmm. I'm going to just keep doing me. I have the secret sauce. I am mm -hmm. the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. You want what I have. I know that I know what I know. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. not going to make me feel like I'm, you know, uh, insecure about who I am and what I'm doing. Y'all get the likes up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be certain of myself because I know who brought me here. I know who I belong to, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know who brought me here. And I know it's by his grace. It ain't about uh, anybody else and what they... Uh, want to project upon me or want to do to try to manipulate me or to politicize this position so that I feel like I'm on edge constantly. That I'm telling you will destroy people. And it does. I've seen people go crazy. I've seen some brothers, good, good um friends of mine grew up friends. I'm like, they kind of lost their mind because of corporate America. They have been through the ringer and they looking at their counterparts getting certain privileges that they don't have. I've seen it. So if we are not really settled in ourselves, who we are, our value, the fact that we are, uh, are already enough, mm -hmm. right? That our talents, yes, are equal, if not greater than our counterparts. Mm -hmm. It can really get to you. It can really get to you. And it can have you kind of, like I said, off balance in whatever environment, your relationship environment, <laughs> your professional environment, your environment within yourself. Yep. Really be thrown uh, because you can feel this sense of just, uh, you know, not being um not being um certain of yourself mm -hmm. so i'm grateful that you have shared that mr real estate i'm gonna bring you up i know you got, got something to say he loved coming up on the panel and i love it too <laughs> mr real estate unmute yourself when you're ready and you come on up Here mutations you how are you guys doing how are Hello. you <laughs> lovely to see you sir how you doing today i'm doing well getting a late start to the day it's uh 10 30 a.m over here on the west coast but before Aww. i get to the gym i was like hold up suzette is live i gotta hear her speak <laughs> thank you i appreciate you mr real estate you say your content is coming on board real real soon 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Starting next Monday, I'm going to have some videos being published and then I'm going live uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So, yeah, starting uh, next week, you can definitely see a lot of content coming your way. Fun. And then tell us what you're going to focus on or what, what kind of uh, content are you going to provide? Well, you know, the name is Mr. Real Estate, so it's predominantly going to be uh, real estate based, um, okay. investing, business, okay. entrepreneurship. Um, at the end of the day, I really want to motivate people to get into the realm of real estate. Okay. Um, it's very important for us to have representation in all spaces, just mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm sure in Miss Angela's experience and leadership in the hospitality industry, there's a lot of times where you're the only black person in the room. And, and I would like that to not always be the case. So I want to see us in business, entrepreneurship and real estate, because I think that's the only way to survive the, the disruption that's going to be going on in the economy. This. Exactly. Yeah. So other comments, what do you think about today's discussion? What, what did you hear in your spirit? Yeah, well, um, honestly, I'm not a very Christian, um, necessarily r religious person. I mean, I like to kind of go to the source, go to what we were studying when we were indigenous and all that. But but no matter what, what religious sect you have, you understand the spirit of God, whether you identify it as God, whether you call it your ancestors, whether you call it the Holy Ghost or, or karma or whatever metaphysical term. And I must say, for me, not being a Christian, uh, Miss Angela is up here spitting a prophetic word. She is <laughs> preaching. If we was in church right now, I'd be falling out with the Holy Ghost on the ground, flapping like a fish. I'd be like that woman vibing out. We got greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes. No, 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 no. You name it. Girl, you are spitting the word. You might have converted me. You might have. If, if you start a church, let me know. You got a follower. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that testimony is real it don't matter believe not believe it, it hits home truth yeah. hits home. truth hits home you know truth when you hear it exactly. and 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 when you talk about the the vision that was bestowed upon you the the woman under the table this is something that i've been talking about recently with a lot of different content creators it's not just that we don't need to be under the table begging for the handout. We need a seat at the table. But I would go a step further and say we need to have the opportunity, the ecosystems to build the table if we choose to. Amen. I want to see us at the highest levels. And in order for us to do that, we got to understand this. Um, in your situation, although that was God working, there was a lot going on there in the in the unseen realm. Um, a lot of it was your own due diligence, your work ethic. You're talking about you got a team that knows you were just fired. They're still on code helping you get this next job. They did that because of your leadership. And what luck is, is opportunity meets preparation. And damn, woman, you was prepared for that opportunity. You was prepared to receive that blessing. And this right here is a difference between prejudice and nepotism. I own an insurance practice. If I, within my organization, even though I'm at the top level, even though I have the most autonomy, I still got a board of directors. I still got people that I've got to answer to. So if I have a position that I'm hiring for and I only hire black people, even though I've hired Hindus, I've hired Asians, I've hired um, Mexicans, I've hired many different creeds of people. But if I only choose black people and if on paper, those black people are not as qualified they aren't properly competing with those other individuals, then now I'm going to get a call to an office. Now I'm going to get an email like, what's going on here? Yes. But here's the difference. If all those black people are equally qualified, like Miss Angela was qualified and has always been qualified, then what happens is when that weird Caucasian person who has something to say about it comes through, well, Bob, would you be saying this if I had only hired white people for the last eight hires would you be saying this if it was only agents for the last eight hires on paper these these are competent these are professional these are accredited individuals so we need to understand that in order for us to receive our blessing for us to be able to reach back and give you the opportunity without putting my leadership role in jeopardy you have to be prepared you gotta be ready i hear you loud and clear loud and clear preparation meeting opportunity loud and clear she was ready to step into that next door if she hadn't been ready, it could have been a whole different story <laughs> of like, ooh, sad days forever. Like not forever, but you know, for the short term. So you're absolutely right. Well, well said, Mr. Real Estate. Those, those who are ready, help us, God. Those who are ready, working, putting in the work, putting in the time, getting certified, getting all those other, you know, lean six sigma, whatever under your belt. So that when the opportunity comes and someone can, as he says, open the door, can and will open the door, uh, we got to be ready to step in there.
and do the work. So I hear you loud and clear um, that only preparation, real preparation can counteract what you're saying, which can be prejudice and nepotism, <laughs> which is like, how do we get around this? Well, we can't, but we can be ready. We definitely can be ready. We definitely can be ready. Other thoughts, sir? Very good. And other thoughts, sir? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I like to <clears throat> leave people with actionable steps. You know, you, you got a lot of people watching right now. We are three successful black individuals in different spaces. And I like to leave people with some steps. And I would say this, if, if we say that by and large our community has issues, we can't expect the people that are most afflicted to have the solutions. We can only expect the people that are most well off and hope that they spend their their discretionary time and income on reaching back and helping others. So this is how we affect change. By everybody who is like us up on the panel and, and in the chat, and, and really a lot of your followers are probably very astute individuals. I mean, the kind of topics that you cover alone, I mean, it's not like you up here talking about some shade room type stuff, right? <laughs> so, so what us in, astute individuals need to do is continue to strive to be the best versions of ourselves and accomplish our goals. Because once we bring ourselves to the highest level, yes. then we can reach around and we can start affecting some change. And more specifically, this is how even us three can do it. If Mr. Real Estate accomplishes his goals, I'm a real estate developer, real estate investor, and my end goal with real estate is to play the game of Monopoly to the highest degree. And what's the game of Monopoly? You buy a house, you buy another house, at some point you trade up, you get the hotel, you buy the boardwalk. The higher upper echelons of real estate investing is commercial real estate, yes. Mr. Real Estate owning a hotel, Mr. Real Estate owning storefront, Mr. Real Estate owning a strip mall that we're going to lease out to an anchor tenant, get Walmart and Starbucks and everybody in there, etc. So if Mr. Real Estate strives to be the best version of himself and accomplishes that goal. And if Suzette keeps up her platform and keeps up the engaging discussion, bringing up individuals like this, giving people who would otherwise not have the access to even knowing someone like Miss Angela. Yeah. And if Miss Angela keeps spreading the gospel and inspiring black and brown folks to get into leadership and to get into hospitality, then when Mr. Real Estate finally owns a hotel, we got some qualified candidates to hire. <laughs> Build each one, teach one, each one building. Exactly. Yeah, the community, right? It kind of circulates from us just being great within our spaces. I hear you. I hear you. They say gas and where I say, oh, Mr. Real Estate, really down for the call. Oh, no. If you listen to him speak on various platforms, it is uh, he's quite enlightened. And he uh, understands, I think, what it's going to take uh, to help rebuild back our communities. I'm talking about strong communities, families, as well as communities as far as the dollar as far as the dollars circulating among us. But that is very, 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 I can agree more. I think very on point um, what he just said. We got to all in our own way, just do what we're supposed to be doing and to be good at it, uplift as we climb. And then there are opportunities where we can now have our pocket, help your pocket, help his pocket uh, of, of, of need uh, when we are able to. So I hear you. The comment section is going crazy. Uh, Suzette, you need to have Mr. Real Estate. Mr. Real Estate, you're going to make that happen. Let's have it. Let's do a show. I wouldn't be, I would be happy to. Uh, uh, Learn Biz, what's good? My sister in law, Learn Biz, the podcast on Mr. Real Estate is preaching too. Uh, thank you, Seattle Black Veteran. Yay. Was one of the sponsors of my last stream. Uh, my sister Suzette, keep up. Thank you. Ebony says, yes, have him on. All right, Mr. Real Estate. Uh, Real Deal Special says, a word. So, yes, he definitely comes strong with uh, a wonderful uh, take on what it is that we need to be doing and how in not just being inspired, but just doing, mm -hmm. being good at what you do, learning your craft, opening a door when you can. And by being good, someone else can help you by being ready. Someone else can help you when the time comes and we can help each other. Uh, can I just add Rose? one thing to yes, that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank go you ahead. so much for your feedback um, and your um, contribution, Mr. Real Estate. I, I wanted to add something because I love the, the topic of what you're talking about today. And does your story have you stuck? And what I've learned over these many, many years is that you know, number one, we do need the finance finances to build. You know, we're building a generational wealth. You know, we're building a legacy. That's important. Um, what I've learned is that it's never the money. Mm. It's always the mindset. Like I can give you my years of experience. I can tell you all the things. You know, I'm sure Mr. Real Estate can come in and teach you how to flip, how to you do do all the mm. things. But if you're thinking, if your mindset is that under the table mindset and you don't think you're worthy of it, you don't think, you know, like people come to me, they always want the strategy. Like, give me the, tell me how to do it. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. 
But sometimes we got to work on your mindset because if I give you all the things, you'll have those things. It's just like you, I'm sure everybody here has books on the shelf that they never finished reading. They got audio books. <laughs> they got programs that they invested in that maybe they didn't complete, yes. right? Yes. But if, it, if, it, if the mindset, if the thinking about who you are, who you be in the world is not in alignment, right? Then it, it's almost like you're just, you know, throwing your seat on, on ground that's not fertile. Right. And nothing grows. Help us all, God. This is this is what this platform is about. Mindset shifting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thinking about ourselves, what we deserve, what we're capable of, who we deserve to be, Mm -hmm. what we deserve to eat. Where are you on the floor uh, asking for the scraps? Are you just at the table? Like it's a very big we talking about uh, psychologically speaking mentality. Where are we again? That historical conditioning. Mm-hmm. has played a big role and oftentimes leaving uh, some of us behind to ask for scraps. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. be grateful. Even and I people- love my parents, but they was one of like, just keep your job, be happy, keep your job, yeah. what you doing? It is a very, very deep seated thing. Go ahead, Angela. Yes. Even the people who love us the most, my love Lord. us the most, like your parents. So yes. for me in 2019, I transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship, but I had family members say, don't leave that good job. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, like don't, Leave it. Okay. Cause I, I was like, today is the day I'm done. They're like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. And, and so I would pause and give it more thought and pause and give it more thought. And then the day came that I said to a, my, one of my closest cousins, she was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? I said, what if I said, we're always focused on what we have to lose. You can't pay the mortgage, can't pay, you know, am I going to make enough money? We're always focused on what we have to lose, but rarely do we focus on what we have to gain. And what if every month I stay in this job, I'm losing money. Every month I say no to what is calling me. I'm I'm in a deficit of what I could have. And she was like, I have nothing to say to that. And that was the day I left. Right. And in like 32 mm. days, I generated $46,000. I never, mm. that might not be a lot of money for you guys. That might No, but you did it. But Nobody was, wrote your paycheck. Right. It exactly. Was, it It'll wow. matter if you made $20,000. If you made $20,000 on your own versus $100,000 so that somebody cut you, exactly. tell me that, that, that $20,000 do not feel better. <laughs> it does. Yeah, but so I was imagine like, doing that in how many days? Like It was, it was 32 days huge. I generated $46,000. That's I the hardest thing in. to do. Get somebody to spend a buck with you. I've learned that as an attorney. I'm like, once you hang your shingle, it was like, whoa, it just got real. For someone to value what I'm offering and come and spend money here, that that whole learning curve, they don't teach you that in law school on purpose. They don't teach you that at any school unless you go to MBA school on purpose because Mm -hmm. we are meant to be worker and nothing is wrong if you find that corporate job and that uh, aligns with your family needs, your personal needs, and you know insurance and all that. I'm I'm not saying I'm all no, don't do corporate. Corporate can be very lucrative. All I'm saying is if you are called to step into the world of entrepreneurship. It is huge, y'all, when you can finally make that buck and you did it like right out the gate. So, yeah. and there was still cuz in your ear. Well, you, you sure, you sure? You the sure, now, she, sure? now she helps do, helps handle projects for me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. Hey, and, and also j- just like, um, just like Angela was saying, I mean, I can scream from the mountaintops, do this, do that, give you all the actionable steps in real estate and, and any kind of field you're interested in. But the average person will not take action. The average person will not take the initiative. Yeah. Right now, right now, within my insurance practice, I'm hiring all the time for open positions. I have created a business that is nationwide, that is completely virtual. Anybody who wants to work with Mr. Real Estate, I've got an actionable system in place that I perfected over the last three years, no guesswork. But guess what happens? When I put out my Indeed ads, as attractive as the ad is, I don't get a lot of black folks applying. Wow. And, 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 and no matter what race of the person that applies, the average person will not take initiative. They say that the game is to be sold and not told. Well, Mr. Real Estate will get up here and preach for free all day because I don't care because I know the average person won't even take initiative. No, this is it, 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 you can tell them, you can tell, you can give people the game. Thank God for the lead attorney in the YouTube because I'm looking at it. He said the same thing. He's like, I couldn't believe I would be making this money way more than I'm making as attorney and other people don't believe it. And, the, and if he gives you the game, there's people that still won't sit on the sidelines or sit on it and say, 
still not uh, just do and work the formula. I hear you. Most people, I don't know. We have gotten very, very lax in our country. There was a very, like a deep hunger. And some people still have this hunger and drive to, to be, you know, not only your best, but just to go after what's yours. Mm -hmm. um, and there, and again, the bumps and bruises of corporate America can often try to, you know, take that flame out and mm -hmm. make you feel like, man, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna, the mentality, as we talk about the, the stories that have us stuck and have us, you know what? I don't want the stress. I'm gonna just keep my little job. Nothing wrong with it. It's not a critique. It's an observation. But yeah, I hear you, Mr. Real Estate. You say you got that flame. You, you, you got the blueprint and you can share it right here online. And not okay. only... Still not I am talking it. about I am talking about literally I will hire a person. You don't even have to have experience to work with me. I will teach you and train you, get you licensed, everything, pay for it out of my own pocket. And guess what I just had happen in the last three months? I hired on two people. One of them, let's call him Brad, and let's call the other person Tyler. Brad, in his first 30 days, and mind you, they both have the blueprint. They both have the system. I'm giving them the guidance, the access to me, the mentorship. Brad in his first 30 days, and this isn't an, ex an example, I'm being literal with what I'm about to say next. Brad in his first 30 days working with me made $18,000. Brad before working with me was driving for Uber, Grubhub, any little app he can find, doing it for 60 to 80 hours a week to make maybe $2,500 a month. He said to me in the interview, I said, listen, in order for you to work for me full time, how much money do you need to make? And I'll show you what to do to make that. He said, listen, Mike, I need to make about 3200 a month in order for me to be at a good place, in order for me to quit my job, to quit what I'm doing. And in his first month following my system, he made $18,000. Wow. And that's Brad. And guess what happened with Tyler? Tyler had the access to the same exact system as Brad, but maybe he, he didn't have the same hunger for whatever reason. And Tyler made $200 in his first 30 days. So the difference between making $200 and making $18,000 when y'all both have the same exact access, you both have the same exact head start, it comes down to personal drive. And a lot of people like that. And it's unfortunate. Mm, 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 mm. I'm, I see you, Seattle Black Veteran. We got a few minutes. I'm going to bring him up. Thank you, Mr. Real Estate. Bringing that fire as usual. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, Seattle Black Veteran. How are you? I am doing fine, beautiful ladies. How are you today? Lovely. Happy New Year. Good to Happy see you. Happy New Year. Your thoughts, please, as we wrap. Go ahead and oh, tell us. Real quick. And you know, yes. you guys, are, every time I get with you, Suzette, you're always on point. And Thank everything you. you have, and like you said, you're bringing in the New Year nice. So my thoughts are this as well. I'm a Black Veteran, and I try to get but other black veterans are veterans period to get motivated to fight for their benefits yes. and their rights for their benefits but like you say it's that mindset that you have to get changed around like you say um, and, and like mr real estate said i can talk to you to death but unless you want to get off your backside and start moving yeah and i would tell you that is the biggest flaw i find with a lot of my veterans i go hey I've been doing this for 35 years fighting with them. I'm now a 100% total permanent disabled veteran, which means I get $40,000 tax free a year, uh, every year. So I try to get these brothers to get out there and go, look, you served your country. You got everything you need. Go on fight. Oh, I don't want to go to that apartment. I ain't going to go sit there and then the doctor tell me this. I ain't going to take this medication. I'm like, oh, good Lord. Seriously. Yeah. You know, I had another veteran. He was a purple heart. I say, go get your benefits. Oh, no, man, I'm too strong for that. I say, are you crazy? You know, that means you can pay off. Your student's loans could be paid off if you're 100% right. done. And you mm. can send your kids to school. You can send your your daughters, your granddaughters. Start investing in property. Hello. Exactly. Start doing exactly. other things. So and we I'm, don't. Mentality. Oh, my exactly. goodness. That's exactly. so frustrating. Well, and keep I up think, the good fight. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you guys, what you're doing here, Suzette, and you, Miss Angela, uh, you guys are doing it well. You're doing it good. And, you, 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 and, you, you, and Mr. Real Estate is doing it, too. You're opening up people's um, capillaries. You're opening up their eyes. Look. <laughs> Open up and see what you got in front of you. And um, um, with the help of all three of you, I know we're going to get there soon. Yeah, so I wish forward. you Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that, brother. Y'all see his name, the Seattle Black God veteran, bless. bringing the fire. Thank you for coming up. Appreciate you, sir. Go follow him, please. And thank you for support, as always. Mr. Real Estate, I'm going to drop you back down. You have any final thoughts, Mr. Real Estate? Yeah, you know, a final thought I have, and I'll just kind of, you know, speed run through it to be conscious of your time. 
When we talk about uh, being in control of your future, when we talk about leadership, when we talk about being in control of your story, it is so important because it gives you a foundation. It gives you a position of power. When I was very early in my career, before I got, before I dropped out of college, started real estate at 19, before that, I had some traditional jobs and I would directly experience uncanny situations where, you know, this man, for whatever reason, I, I if he wants me to stand up for eight hours, I got it. I can't sit down. If the, their situations, we're in the store, we go grab something. He, he, uh, he tells me to go head out to the car. The the greeter stops me, asks for a receipt. I go back to him to get the receipt. He says some, oh yeah, they want the receipt because you're black. <laughs> We're working and other people are blasting their music and stuff. And I play a little music that's somewhat R&B and hip hop. And oh no, no, I can't play that. So the marginalization, the racism, the prejudice, it is there. And that's why since 19 onward, I've been self-employed and I always wanted to be in a position where I'm in control over my income. I'm in control over my time. But guess what? Like I said earlier, even if you're at the upper echelons of leadership, you still have to interact with these kind of people. Yeah. I started my insurance practice um, January 2020, a couple months before COVID happened. The first year I didn't just survive. I thrived through the pandemic. Between the, the second year and the next, I increased my business by my business's net revenue by 200 percent. I was winning awards within the organization. And guess what happened? They brought on a new person in the organization, technically on the org chart. They're like really side by side with me, but maybe a slight step above me. And this person comes up and ruins the entire experience. This person now wants us because we're all 1099. We're all running our own business. He wants us on Monday mornings to, to come into the office for a 7 a.m. Uh, d discussion and originally, you can join it virtual or you can join it in person. Well, Mr. Real Estate is going all over town, meeting with people. So I would tune in, but I would tune in on Zoom. He's chastising me. Oh, I, I don't I don't think you're going to be successful as a leader if, if, you, if you don't take yourself. priority. <laughs> well, you saw, I work for myself. Exactly. The road that you are going down, in my opinion, it's, it's not going to lead in a good outcome for you. And when I provide some gentle pushback, oh, I, I can see here, Michael, you, you're being very, very defensive and putting words in my mouth. too. And guess what? I am in a position of power. I don't have to deal with you. I don't have to show up to your meeting if I don't want to. And and it got to a point where I just cut him off. He's sending me texts, all caps. Hey, can you meet on Monday? No, I can't. No, no you, you, you need to, to, to move around your schedule and meet with me. This is important. All caps, oh. exclamation, exclamation. Who are you talking to? Do you not know who I am? But what do you mean? You know who you are. You know I know who I am, and, and I want to be conscious of your time, and I want to dip off here real quick. So this is the last thing that I'm going to leave y'all with. Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to leave y'all with. This, is it okay if I curse, or no, curse. would you prefer don't if I don't? Me. Don't, don't curse? Me. Okay, okay. So, so, so I will say more kid-friendly words. So this mofo <laughs> sends me an email, and this is what the email says. Michael, communication is one of the most important factors of being a good leader and a team player. You are in a management role now, and therefore communication is essential. This is not just communication with the team that you lead, but also with the team that you're on. Lately, I've noticed that you're not returning calls, emails, texts when I try to communicate with you. You have also not been seen at the territory office. I'm sure you have pressing manners that are keeping you busy, but I need to discuss your communication behavior. This behavior is not acceptable as a manager or a team leader. If you have an issue with me or how I lead our team, I would like to discuss these concerns with you. If you're feeling overwhelmed or too busy, I would like to help you with ideas on managing your schedule and prioritizing. I'm not sure why you've chosen your current path of communications, but I'm hoping we can resolve our differences. I would much prefer to work with you than against you. Your team is part of my district and I'm responsible for you and your team. If you and I cannot communicate, I need to know, I need you to know that I will begin to work directly with members of your team. And if you need resources from me in the territory, they will be limited to essential matters only. I am not trying to threaten you. I'm only trying to help you see the current path you are traveling down. That's Let's work together to grow our teams and our successes. Together, we can achieve more. I know we can work things out to find a common ground. I just need you to share in the process and communicate regularly. Please let me know how I can help you from here. So uh, guess how I responded to this mofo? Because <laughs> I actually have worked for since I was 19 to put myself in a position of power. If we're going to be real simple, I told him, to go jump off of a bridge, but we got to be politically correct, folks. So this is what I said. He, here, here's a little corporate lesson for you. 
Mm. Hello. I have no want or need to communicate with you. You have very poor, inappropriate, and unprofessional methods of communication, which is why I told you not to text me anymore and instead email. Whether I am present in the territory office or not is none of your concern. I've mentioned to you before, I have my own office space I work from. I've already discussed issues with you and to no avail. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Instead, I'm going to focus on my business and my team like I've been doing since before you came onto the organization two short months ago. I am not overwhelmed or busy to make this very clear for you. I have chosen less communication with you specifically because of your previous and continued behavior. I find it interesting that you list it working against me as a plausible option. You can work with my team all you want, as long as you are not providing advice or guidance on prospecting or running client meetings, considering you are very new to the organization and I have yet to see you do either things effectively. I hope this provides you with the clarity you seek. <laughs> Mr. Real Estate. Does this person still work with you? I'm just curious. Yes, and he is still sending me emails that I am not responding to. He's already <laughs> blocked from my phone, and he ain't got the message. I told you in plain English, I ain't got no want or need to communicate with you. It is not a prerequisite for my job. My contract is not in jeopardy. Who are you? Yeah, and no. and and here's the twist apart. Since he's slightly higher than me on the org chart, all the all the production I make, all the, the effort that my team does, he financially gets a cut of it. So if anything, you would think if you're new two months in and you got a superstar person that you're getting a cut of the business, you would think you would act a little more amicable. You you think you'd at least shut up and let me do me and you just collect your little cut on the side. Oh, but no, you, these people. Dig deep. And, and like I said, as, as Angela has shared, there are people that have a problem with you that you don't even understand why they are. And I, and again, we can speculate, we can start down that road, but it's up to you as you have maintained your own identity, mm -hmm. your own idea of what you're worth. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with him. You don't have to. And, and again, other people would get stuck and come underneath him and fall in line. Mm -hmm. Other people wouldn't push back. Good for you for pushing back. Other people would say, oh, my God, this is my manager or my regional or whatever. And I have had you you guys are just just sharing the same type of stories. I have friends who are in financial services. They get into a region out in um, uh, Cali. Now they're in Menlo Park. Now they're in um, uh, uh, Silicon Valley. Now they're in other places. And because they have arrived at those places, people in those areas do not want them there. And if you want to call a spade a spade, let's just say the melanation kind of bothers you, them. Who are you mm -hmm. to be in these places? Finish up, Mr. Real Estate. And if you were going to come from a position of power, and if you were going to try to do like Mr. Real Estate did in that email, then the first step is knowing the rules of engagement. Before I engaged with this man, I went to the top of the top, highest person in the organization, had a meeting with them, and and came from a position of, hey, you know, I'm pretty new to having this person assigned to me. I just want to know, you know, from a contractual standpoint, and am I required to go to his meetings? Am I required to, would this put my job? And they said, no, no, you're running your own business. No, no. So then when I knew the rules of engagement, then when I knew the full position of power, that's when you move. So I implore you to know the rules of engagement, the, the, the laws within, you know, the corporate structure that you are abiding by. And then from there, you can take the step forward. But I know I've been ho ho hogging the time. I'm going to dip out. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I'm gonna get ready. You can come back over about 2.30. We're going to start the Patreon. About 2.30, we're going to start the Patreon. Love you. Okay, Thank I'll see you then. Take care. Insight. I know that helps somebody. I know that helps somebody. Thank you for that insight. All right, Mr. Nice Richard. meeting you, Angela. Bye-bye. Meeting you, Don't too. Him. He got something to say. I love <laughs> and he's so passionate about yes, it, Yes, no, fired up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm grateful because, like, other, especially men, when it comes mm -hmm. to corporate spaces who don't have, and I think it was Kimo that said, uh, the mentors, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the guides, those who are opening doors and can allow you to do, you know, to, to help you how to nap, teach you how to navigate. Not everybody has that. So right. when he says, I purposely got into a type of business where I am my own owner. I mm -hmm. found my own taxes. I hire my own people. I, mm -hmm. I developed my own blueprint and mm -hmm. I still got somebody up the corporate rung, so to speak, trying to literally bully me mm -hmm. into pushing, uh, you know, or, or into say, you know, I answer to you. I don't answer to you. My friend once told me, Oh my, it helped me so much. She say, 
Well, if you act like an employee, they're they going to treat you like an employee. Yes. Yeah. I had to say, rrr, 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 rrr. it just that when you talk about mindset, yes. like, yeah. And I'm that's asking, it. That, but that maybe I it. own this firm. What you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. whoa, like you might have more experience or you might, I brought you on because you have done this before. Or you have done that. But baby, this is my rodeo. Mm -hmm. This is my rodeo. And it's, and again, because of age, and I was curious to know how old that person was, Mr. Real Estate. But oftentimes, like I, I saw it in the comments, it'd be a very, very, very young person teaching someone who is more mature and trying to bring them underneath their uh leadership other you know and there can be other dynamics where the person is much older and is like who is this young whippersnapper i'm jealous i don't want nobody to uh you know whatever be um you know um showing me out or i'm jealous that i wasn't where you were mm -hmm. at your age so i'm gonna um um chaos rain i see you but we are wrapping up i'm over time down i said this lady would be out chaos rain i see you oh my goodness um chaos rain can you can you give me a, a one minute um spiel I'm gonna add you real quick. One minute uh, drill. Go ahead, sir. How are you? No, 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 no. I was not staying long. I was saying hello, good Hi. evening. You know what I'm saying? And no, I said it's showing some love and support a little Thank bit. Thank you. So, so yeah, so that's why I came up and said hello because obviously I have to listen to the stream. I see the title, so I can't chime in. Okay. So I'm glad you brought me up. Yeah, you, know, you have to explain because normally when I come up, I'll come short, high, and then keep pushing. All right. <laughs> bye bye. So well, me in the content. All right. All right. What? Thank you, Chaos Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, my yeah. brother. Thank you for showing some love. All right. I'm going to give Angela the last word. Y'all, we have a lot of um, uh, whew, a lot of trauma, workplace trauma that can ruin or cost you your confidence. Mm -hmm. Not allow you to define yourself as you should. You still under the table. All right. So, Angela, when it comes to like putting a bow on this topic of changing the narrative, the story that has you stuck, right. just leave us with some final words of, of um, inspiration, if you will, um, mm -hmm. that can can help us to, you know, narrow down what the story is. That's really the, the problem. If we get quiet, we can do it, y'all. But some people don't even understand the story that's playing in their mind and where it came from. Mm -hmm. But uh, figuring it out and then how to begin to um uh reorganize or, or reframe that narrative how do right. we figure out what story is holding us back and how do we reframe right at the end of the day what i want each and every one of you to be in a position of is really owning yourself and then you know as as it was shared here kind of each one teach one right being in a position to um you know offer freedom because that's what it really is right um, to those you love and those you want to work with. And so um, I'm a mother uh, of uh, a 12 year old little boy. And I just took him in November. We took him for 10 days to Dubai. Um, and he sat at the table with other world class entrepreneurs. He was the only kid there. Um, because, what, like we were talking about earlier, it starts with our thinking, right? What stories are we telling ourselves? Like, what is he seeing and what is he saying? Is he limiting himself at a young age or is he saying that the world is open to him and that he deserves a seat at the table? I want him to know that he deserves a seat at the table. So when it comes to and it was a it was a world class experience for him. So his expectations of what's acceptable, what he likes, what he wants <laughs> he, are getting clear. Right. And we need to have that for ourselves, too. Right. And what I would say is. For you to look at, if you feel like you're in a space where you're not fully stepping into the highest version of who you are, I want you to think about um, the evidence. Don't worry about what other people say, because some of them want you to play small, right? Think about what you've done, how you've shown up, what you've overcome. I shared several stories today. Those are my stories, but you got to say, you have stories too, right? Think about what you've overcome, what the steps that have taken, like where you were brave where you're courageous, where you stepped into things, right? And hold on to those things, right? Knowing who, take time. You might have to take time to just be quiet and knowing who you already are. It's not somebody, you know, making you some, somebody. You're not being made over. You're really stepping into who you already are, right? So I would say hold on to that and the identity that you hold for yourself. And then take action, right? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Or if you're afraid, still taking, you may have to take baby steps, but take actions that are in alignment who you say you be in the world. 
right? Holding the identity of who you, you know, your the highest version of who you are and really taking steps that are in alignment with that. And that will never lead you astray. You know, you, you take steps with that. And so I have created a, um, a legacy brand workshop that I do. Um, is it okay to share that? Absolutely. Please, please. Yeah. So I'm all about building legacy. And that means, you know, from, you know, we build brands from the inside out and I'm talking about generational wealth. Um, and you doing work that you love. And so I've created the legacy brand method and I teach it in a five day free workshop. It's a free workshop. We hold it on zoom and in our Facebook group, our, the name of our Facebook group is embrace your brilliance, discover your freedom, right? Embrace your brilliance, discover your freedom. What we've been talking about this whole time. Right. Um, and so if you come there, I'll, I'll share the, the registration link with um, Suzanne, uh, Suzette speaks so that um, you can share it with your listeners if you like. But um, we'd love to have you come join us. And we spend a whole week together. Um, one, it starts on January the 24th. It's a Monday, January 24th. We go for the week and it's one hour each evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we really go deep on branding. Because I, what I find. I'm going to be there. Um, excuse me. Send me the link. I'm going to be there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will put it. I'll put the link in the description. You can send it to me after or have yeah, Tandy do it. I will. But I will be there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. But it really helps you go deep on who am I? How am I showing up in the world? You know, how do I align with what I'm really called to do? And then step into that. Like what what business model? We, I know you have a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners here. What business model are you pursuing? And are there other options that may um, get you to your goal quicker, sooner, faster. Um, we're open. To, we, we believe that all, there are many models that work. And so we're really open to sharing ones that are going to really help you um, build the legacy um, and, and generational wealth as quickly as possible. And really having you back in the driver's seat where you feel like you have choices. I told my son, no matter if you work for a corporate, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, organization or you work for yourself. I don't really care about that. I want you to be a problem solver in the world and I want you to own yourself. I don't want you to ever work for somewhere, someone that doesn't, that mistreats you and you feel like you need to stay. You know, I always want you to have choices and that's what I want for everybody that I work with. Ooh, I am grateful. I'm going to be there. Queen Regina says very good information, please. And thank you. Um, Y'all can go. I put her LinkedIn. I put her um, uh, other links in the description and I'll add this one to, uh, her description. I'm so grateful, Angela, you have so many nuggets. I'm going to be chopping this back up and putting it back out there in probably 10 minute bites because <laughs> there was so much good information. I can agree with Queen Regina and I'm sure many of you have been watching throughout. Uh, we have so many views, uh, that have, uh, heard something that touched you, uh, drop a two in the chat. If you heard something that touch you, something that can help you, something that released uh, something for you, drop a two in the chat. I just want to make sure, um, since y'all wanted to talk about uh, uh, pop culture and other platforms, since y'all want to talk about, um, I don't want to say shade room stuff, <laughs> I want to know if this type of material is, is what you guys want. So if you heard something, drop a two in the chat so we know that this type of uh, self-awareness, self-improvement, uh, emotional intelligence, uh, 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 professional development is good to you. If it does something for you, if it's, if it's something that you feel like you need or gain value from drop a two in the comment, because I want to keep doing it. Uh, but y'all telling me, some people telling me pivot the relationship, pivot to this, pivot to that. And I want to be true to who I am. Um, mm -hmm. but I want to know if you want it, because really what it boiled down to is who watching, right? Mm -hmm. The eyeballs, this is what we're doing. It. This is also my freedom call. Hallelujah. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I love media but I've been hired help. So I want to also develop my own brand, praise be, be to God, and mm -hmm. go into YouTube with a purpose of, yes, it's a business as well. You can help people and make money at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if it, if it feel good to you, if it have something that pricks you and, and, and speaks to you, let me know, drop a two in the comment section. I see y'all, thank y'all. Cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold on. I said, I'm gonna give it a year. We're going to be there together. Um, uh -huh. But of course, without support, without the eyes, without the uh, 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 the gifts. Thank you all for the donations. The super chats were on fire today. Thank you. Let me just throw it up before we leave. Um, thank you to our show sponsors. I hope I caught all of you guys who gave super chats. Thank you to 
Willie Walker Whistle. Doug, shout out to Doug, Patreon member. I'll see y'all at about 2.30. I'm going right to Patreon right after this. I'm going to just pat my nose, grab a quick bite, and go over there. Real Deal Spencer, Patreon member. Thank you, Uncle Stu, the old man on the block. I'll be on his show on the 20, I think it's the 9th. It's a Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, last Tuesday of the month, I'm going to be on Uncle Stu's show. I can't even look at my calendar real fast. But yeah, 25th. 25th of January, I'll be over on Uncle Stu, the old man on the block. Chemo also, thanks for always being an ardent supporter. Ebony, one of my day ones. Thank you, my darling. Thank you guys to all the super chatters, all the cash appers who have uh, shown some love. Again, if you're interested in the Patreon, I think you say Louise B. Louise B just became a member of the Patreon. It came up right on my phone. So I hope you see the link, my darling, of the Patreon discussion we're going to have in about 10, 15 minutes about uh, reconnecting after the pandem pandemic, losing the spirit of isolation that we've always all kind of developed. I'm not just talking physical. I'm talking about mental and spiritual as well, right? So we got to talk about it. You know, I just like to do a little deep dive, probably be on there about an hour. So come on over. Welcome Louise B to the Patreon. More exclusive content not here on YouTube. Angela, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Y'all hit the like button before uh, y'all head out. I just want to show you, my darling, as you, um, as we get uh, direct feedback, I see a lot of twos here. I see a lot of twos. People are feeling the content. No, Thank you, Sim Sia. Great, inspiring information. Thank you. I see you twos in the chat for, <laughs> for having impact, liking what you see. I want more of what you see. Again, I'm, I'm doing it because I like it, but you mm -hmm. got to get people what they want. That's what they say. Uh, Thank says, you. Wow. We are, uh, where were all these powerful women when I was coming up? <laughs> I hear you. We here though. Like uh, Mr. Real Estate says, we're trying to teach as we are learning. Uh, thank you. I see you. I see you guys. I see you. I see you. I see you. I appreciate y'all. So, okay. There's somebody getting a little bit of something. Yeah. This is Angela's link. Be, be brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, you see it. It's also in the description. So mm -hmm. it'll be easier for you guys to get that way. Or if you're in the chat, you can thank get you the link. That. So that is her link. The workshop link. Thank you. See how my moderators, they be moving before I move. They be like, okay, here we go. Thank you, RM. I'm the job. Always. I just, say, I just want to say one thing. Like, I love the work that you're doing. I think there's a huge audience. There's so many more people that need to know about you. And I'm going to share you. I posted it in my group, but I'm going to be, I talk, I train every Tuesday in my group. And I, yeah. and I, there are a tribe of brilliant women that are in my group and some really smart guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have them come over to check you out because I've consumed some of your content and it's on point. Thank it's you. really, really good stuff. So I'm so glad that you decided to start what you're doing. I would not have known that you started in October if you didn't mention it. Huh? <laughs> um, but it's it's really high level. The conversations that you're having here uh, matter. And I'm so glad that you stepped into this space. It's just excellent. Thank um, you. So, thank Coming you. from a dynamo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sis. That's huge. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, like I said, it won't be big numbers. I ain't in the thousands yet. Like my big brother TLA and some of that. I'm not watching that, though. We're just going to do it. We just gonna do the work. Lots of love to you. Y'all see her name there. Go over to her website. Go over to her Facebook. Also send me the link for the Facebook group. If I don't know yeah. if they have to sign up for that or what. Yeah, I want everybody to connect with her. Um, solid, clearly, solid. She got something to say and something to teach. So we be, we're very, you know, choosy when we come to who we invite because we want people that actually got, you know, the the ability to guide in the right way right so y'all support her you doing a youtube channel yet or what we're gonna have you on youtube you know what i think i'm gonna start it this year i haven't yes. um i haven't done a lot on youtube yet i'm, I'm trying to, i'm trying to handle all of the things yeah no i'm probably um, only got the time i'm very big on like now that i understand youtube i'm like mm -hmm. oh everybody need to be on youtube and because it's just another audience but i know it takes time and it takes planning mm -hmm. so i get it you probably have a lot on your coaching side um but y'all see her name once again Miss Angela Durant, uh, find her the Be Brilliant Movement. Um, Madrina, you ain't playing. She's on my signed up. All right, <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been real. Love you, Angela. Thanks for being love on, you sis. Too. You were amazing. Thank you. The chat has been so good. They like, oh, we love her. I'm grateful for your time, my darling. Thank you for being here. Hope to have you back. All right. Thank you. God bless Thank you. Time. And everybody, uh, Patreon, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Love y'all so much. See you. Have a great one. Thank Bye. you. Bye now. Bye.